If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 26 Zoro was busy hacking the wooden golem stakes in one area while Luffy remained far from idle. In the vast world of Akame G.A. Kill, Luffy found himself stranded on a deserted island. Having defeated Ibera and Sten of the Raksha Four Demons before, he pressed forward beyond the palace, ignoring Mine and Tatsumai's attempts to dissuade him. After overcoming five levels and vanquishing six generals, Luffy finally reached the inner city gate of the palace. Yet, upon stepping inside, a dimensional formation appeared beneath him, instantly teleporting him back to the deserted island an occurrence that marked his 40th return in the past few days. With a buzz, the dimensional phalanx flickered, and Luffy reappeared on a large rock on the desolate island. Frustrating. This time, I actually got a good look at that scoundrel. When I get out of here, I'm going to teach him a lesson. Just as he was teleported, Luffy confirmed that the individual initiating the dimensional phalanx was the figure seated in a nearby tree. However, before he could act, he found himself once again stranded on the deserted island. A low growl resonated along with sudden rustling from the trees to Luffy's left. Moments later, a pack of dangerous creatures resembling wild wolves emerged from the woods. Looks like another round of tussle for me, Luffy murmured as he stood his ground, clenched his fists, and focused on the menacing pack of wild wolves advancing towards him. Arg! The alpha of the dangerous wolf pack raised its head, letting out a fierce howl. The other wolves bared their teeth and charged at Luffy with intense aggression. Boom! 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 Luffy maintained his focus and swiftly knocked down the three approaching wolves. Battle experience gained, plus 1000. Fruit proficiency increased, plus 1000. Hacky prototype experience gained, plus 1000. Battle experience gained, plus 1000. Fruit proficiency increased, plus 1000. Hacky prototype experience gained, plus 1000. Suddenly, a bloody maw emerged just above Luffy's left shoulder. Wu the wolf yelped, and Luffy swiftly snapped its neck. This particular wild wolf remained etched in Luffy's memory. It was the one that had bitten him when he first arrived on the deserted island, followed by an onslaught from the entire wolf pack. At that moment, Luffy had believed he was facing imminent death. However, the excruciating pain had jolted Luffy out of the manga world. Although the agony persisted within the pirate world, the bloody wound had vanished. This incident imparted a crucial lesson to Luffy injuries sustained in the Akame G.A. Kill world would not carry over to the real world. As the confrontation unfolded on the desolate island. Whoosh. Boom. Boom. Luffy swayed, evading attacks, causing each wild wolf to crash to the ground. Several of these wolves had delivered potentially fatal blows to Luffy. However, with each subsequent return, Luffy noticed a change within himself. His hearing seemed to have heightened. Initially reliant on sight to anticipate the wolves' attacks, Luffy gradually began to sense their movements. In this particular instance, his newfound listening ability had reached a pivotal stage. Luffy could now keenly perceive movements from all directions, even beyond his field of vision. With a snap, Luffy dispatched the last alpha wolf to the ground, eliciting an unwilling howl. Battle experience gained, plus 1000. Fruit proficiency increased, plus 1000. Hacky prototype experience gained, plus 1000. With hacky prototype reaching the standard, observation hacky practice begins. With hacky prototype reaching the standard, armament hacky practice begins. Invisible cues materialized above Luffy's head. Flutter, flutter. Before Luffy could catch his breath, the distinct sound of wings flapping filled his ears. Damn it, it's happening again. Turning his gaze toward a nearby cave, Luffy spotted a swarm of menacing bat-like creatures. These creatures were as large as roosters, boasting razor-sharp claws and outrageously long fangs. What made them particularly fearsome was their sheer number a horde of no less than 300 bats soared overhead. By his twelfth return to the deserted island, Luffy had mastered dealing with the wild wolf population. However, facing these bat-like creatures was an entirely different ordeal. Until his last visit, Luffy had only managed to escape with numerous bruises. Unlike wolves limited to ground attacks, these big bats could strike from the air without constraint. Moreover, due to their physique, their flight produced far less audible noise compared to the wild wolves. Had it not been for Luffy's increasing hacky experience, he wouldn't have detected the faint sounds of thump, thump, thump. As the large bat flew by just now. The highest count was 42. 
Wonder if I can surpass 50 this time, Luffy muttered to himself. Jumping down from the boulder, he dashed into the woods. Engaging a large swarm of bats out in the open equated to suicide. In the cover of the forest, Luffy leveraged the terrain to confront the menacing flock of big bats. Gomo Gomo no baseball hit. Luffy's arm, wielding a tree trunk, extended abruptly, swiftly dispatching one of the bats. This method had proven effective for Luffy after numerous encounters. Attacking with a fist inevitably risked exposure to the bat's venomous fangs. Once bitten, paralysis was a certainty. By utilizing tools, Luffy circumvented this peril. Battle experience gained, plus 1000. Fruit proficiency increased, plus 1000. Observation hacky experience gained, plus 1000. Unbeknownst to him, Luffy instinctively tapped into his observation hacky. Taking on groups of big bats, Luffy dealt with them one by one, only to face a swarm upon their departure. Whoosh! His other arm swiftly latched onto distant trees, allowing him to retract out of the big bats' attacking range. Two aggressive bats competed with Luffy, hurtling toward him at speed. Emerging from behind a tree, Luffy's arm struck each bat swiftly at the back of their heads. Phew! Fourth! Phew! Fifth! Continuously in motion, Luffy evaded and struck, methodically eliminating the big bats one after another. After dispatching more than forty, a crimson glint appeared in the bat's eyes, triggering a frenzied state. Their speed surged, and they no longer acted solo but amassed, launching coordinated assaults from all sides. Phew! Luffy countered those charging at him. In the past, this would lead to Luffy being overwhelmed by the bat swarm. However, today was different. After incapacitating the bats before him, Luffy keenly discerned the sounds of every bat around him left, right, above, below, and behind. With this acute auditory sense, Luffy could precisely pinpoint each bat's spatial position. Bolstered by this newfound listening power, Luffy's confidence soared. Phew! 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 As the last big bat fell under Luffy's strikes, he leaped up excitedly, Wow, haha! I've become even stronger! Chapter 27 Inside the cabin, in Logan's studio. I've completed another manga, and my attribute points should see a significant increase, Logan remarked, setting down his paintbrush and stretching. Throughout the process of creating manga, both speed and defense attribute points steadily rose. Upon completing a manga, there was always a substantial surge in these attribute points. Curious, Logan accessed the system interface to verify. Indeed. The speed attribute value surged by over 3,000 points, and the defense attribute value ascended by more than 5,000 points. A satisfying boost. Hmm? However, Logan noticed a change in the integral value beneath the attribute points. Until he met Luffy, this value had remained at zero. Just a few days ago, it had progressed from zero to one. And now, it had advanced again, from one to two. According to the annotations next to the points, upon accumulating ten, one could exchange them for treasures. What triggers this point increase? If my routine hasn't changed since joining the Straw Hat Pirates, drawing manga every day. Could it be that a particularly exceptional manga grants immediate points? Glancing at the recently finished biography of Zaraki Kenpeki, Logan speculated randomly. Ah, forget it. I've decided to take it easy, so let the points increase if they wish. It doesn't bother me if they don't. After pondering for a while, Logan couldn't find an answer, deciding not to waste his mental energy on such matters. Anyway, the Straw Hat Pirates had his back. Logan would undoubtedly survive until the story's conclusion. Gilyalu. His stomach growled in protest. Glancing at the time, Logan realized it was already dinner time. Upon opening the door, the aroma of barbecue wafted in. Wow, that smells amazing. Out on the deck, Luffy and Zoro were grilling an unknown sea creature over the fire. Hey, Logan, you're just in time. We've just finished grilling this big fish. Luffy exclaimed enthusiastically, ready to seize the cooked fish. Stop. Witnessing the scene, Logan swiftly intervened, swiftly moving in front of Luffy, seizing his hand to prevent him from grabbing the food, expressing clear disdain. Picking your nose while cooking is not a good habit, Logan reprimanded firmly. That's right. I've been telling him that for ages. But he never listens. Zoro chimed in, supporting Logan's stance with a hint of frustration. However, upon hearing Zoro's words, 
Logan's expression turned grave. What? Did you just do that? He asked, his tone filled with disbelief. MHM, Luffy affirmed innocently, his expression seemingly harmless. Swish. At that moment, Zoro swiftly used his blade to cleave the large grilled fish into two halves. All right, this half is far from the handled part, it's safe. Logan, let's share this, Zoro suggested, offering more than half of the grilled fish to Logan. You two are quite the pair, Logan remarked dryly. Disappointed, Luffy shrugged and seized the remaining half of the fish, absent-mindedly continuing to pick his nose while eating. Meanwhile, Logan brought two pots, and Zoro deftly sliced the fish into several generous portions, dropping them into the pots. Let me warn you, keep an eye on Luffy while cooking, he might just pick his nose again, so you better use your sword on him. Logan joked while enjoying the grilled fish. Admittedly, the fish in the One Piece world tasted exceptionally good. The tender and flavorful meat was a delight even without seasoning. Zoro tore off a sizable portion and indulged in its savory taste, relishing the meal. By the way, Logan, your speed is incredible. Is it a physical technique? Zoro inquired, impressed by Logan's unprecedented display of speed. This marked the first time Zoro had witnessed Logan's remarkable swiftness. He believed that even his current mentor, Sasaki Kojiro, couldn't match Logan's speed. Unbeknownst to Zoro, Logan's earlier rapid appearance in front of Luffy was not at his full speed but merely a spontaneous movement far from teleportation. Meanwhile, Luffy joined the conversation, recalling, Yet, yeah, when you slapped the marine captain in Shell's town, your speed was mind-blowing. Why didn't you ask about it then? Zoro wondered. Luffy blinked innocently, replying, I forgot. Then, Luffy turned to Logan and queried, Is this speed also a skill from the manga fruit? Manga fruit. Logan was taken aback. How did I become a manga fruit user? Upon contemplation, Logan realized his exceptional manga drawing skills might be mistaken for a fruit ability. Well, I'll embrace that title then, Logan chuckled to himself. If anyone asks, I'm the manga fruit user. As for why he lacked typical fruit abilities, Logan explained, it's straightforward. My abilities are solely focused on crafting storylines. However, when it came to his speed, Logan didn't attribute it to the fruit ability. No, this is my inherent talent. It's not just speed, my defense is also incredibly robust. Logan clarified proudly. It's an immensely powerful talent. Zoro couldn't help but show his envy. With that speed, just a bit of training could make you a formidable swordsman right from the start. So, uh, in the future fights, can I use you as a shield? Luffy's peculiar brain circuits led to an unusual request, always diverging from typical conversations. Why do you have to be so offbeat? Logan jokingly chided Luffy, lightly tapping him on the head. However, amid the jest, a fleeting thought crossed Logan's mind. Should I entertain this idea? But he quickly dismissed it. He couldn't allow Luffy to transform into a skill. If it became an established tactic, Luffy would end up using it regularly in battles. Yet, yeah, you're really incorrigible. Zoro chimed in, taking the opportunity to tease Luffy. Luffy scratched his head, seemingly pondering his words. Am I in the wrong here? After a while, the trio indulged in food and drink until they were content. I'm stuffed. Luffy exclaimed as he rose, stretching his arms and gazing out at the distant sea. Suddenly, his stretching halted, and he shaded his eyes with his hands, peering into the distance. Hey! There's a body floating in the sea. The unexpected exclamation left them all surprised, the discovery looming in the distance, inviting further intrigue. Chapter 28 Logan and Zoro stood up, both observing a small sailboat drifting on the sea. The boat's sails were lowered, and it floated along the waves without any oar movement. A young girl lay motionless on the boat, clearly deceased. However, Logan noticed the distinct tattoo of the Arlong pirates on the girl's arm a mark identifying her as a member of the notorious pirate crew. Luffy glanced down at the drifting boat, expressing sympathy. Such a young woman meeting her end at sea, it's truly unfortunate. Zoro nodded in agreement. Seems like she might have lost her way at sea. Dying out here is really tough luck. Meanwhile, on the boat below, Nami overheard their conversation and was visibly irritated, her frustration evident. You two idiots. I'm not dead. She muttered, annoyed by their assumptions. As an accomplished navigator, Nami had mastered the art of sailing in the East Blue with ease. 
she often set out with a small boat and returned with bountiful treasures. But Luffy, unaware that it was Nami, leaned over the railing, resting his chin on his arms, and suggested, should we rescue her and take a look? Zoro hastily intervened, waving his hands dismissively. No, no. She's already deceased. There's no reason to bring her body up. Ah, yet. Yeah. Luffy suddenly realized and nodded in agreement. That's true. Otherwise, it'll start to smell tomorrow. Puff. Amidst the conversation, Logan struggled to contain his laughter. But at that moment, he couldn't suppress it any longer. Nami was on the verge of a meltdown. Ah. She feigned a slight movement and let out a weak moan. Hey. Zoro turned, surprised. She's still breathing. Yeah, seems like it, Luffy affirmed, calling out, Hey, are you okay? Foolish. Do they really need to ask again? Nami seated with frustration. Why did she have to deal with such uncooperative individuals? Struggling to lift her head, she weakly pleaded, Help. Please, water. If you can, some bread. I'm starving. Weakly pointing to a nearby large treasure chest, she added, I'll pay you as much as you want. Please, help. Without hesitation, Luffy extended his arms, grasped hers, and swiftly pulled her onto the boat. Hey. Nami was momentarily stunned before realizing she was already aboard the boat. She gazed at Luffy, a hint of horror in her expression. Your, your arms stretched. I've got the powers of the rubber fruit. Look. Luffy beamed demonstrating his rubber fruit ability by stretching his arms toward the sea and sky. Oh. I see. Nami sighed, feeling a bit disappointed. Her original plan had been for the others to notice the large treasure chest on her ship and rush to grab it. Meanwhile, she'd sneak onto their vessel and sail away. However, she hadn't expected them to haul her onto their boat without leaving theirs. Her mind raced as she sought another solution. Can you secure my boat to yours? I'll leave once I've rested. Nami requested. Sure thing. Zoro gripped the railing, leaped off, and landed with a swift motion. Securing the boats required teamwork. Zoro signaled to Luffy, come help me out. Sure thing. Luffy followed suit, leaping down to join Zoro. Together, they secured the small boat to the larger one. That's two down. One more to go, Nami thought, pondering her next move. Turning to Logan, she appealed, please. Can you help me bring that treasure chest aboard? Nami suggested, hoping to appeal to Logan's sympathy. If Logan hadn't read the original manga, he might have fallen for Nami's plea. He shrugged and smiled, no. They've secured the boats, so bring your treasure chest up yourself. Wait, can't be fooled. Nami hesitated for a moment, strategizing her next move. After pondering for a while, she proposed, the waves seem a bit rough. I don't think those two can handle it alone. How about you go and assist your companions? Logan responded with a smile, not necessary. You may not know them well. While they may be a bit dim-witted, they're incredibly strong and resilient. This kind of physical labor is right up their alley. Logan understood Nami's intentions but respected her principles and challenges. On one hand, he needed to gather funds to save an entire village, and on the other, he admired Nami's strict adherence to stealing only from corrupt individuals. Such a principled individual was rare. Sensibly steering the conversation away from the impending tension, Logan offered, let's set this aside for now. You've been hungry for quite some time. How about having something to eat? The enticing aroma of the food reached Nami's senses, making her realize her genuine hunger. Though her weakness was feigned, her hunger was genuine. But how could she resist when faced with such delicious food? Thank you, thank you. Nami expressed gratitude as she received a grilled fish from Logan, feeling a twinge of appreciation. However, her gratitude lasted for a mere two seconds before her instincts kicked in. Pirates are never kind, she reminded herself. He's probably after something pretending to care before launching an attack. Despite his pleasant appearance, he's a pirate. He must be up to no good. Swiftly dismissing the fleeting sentiment, Nami grabbed a piece of grilled fish and swiftly took a bite, refocusing her thoughts. Chapter 29 Got it. With a firm grip, two rubber palms clutched the railing as Luffy gracefully landed on the deck. And me too. Zoro's voice called from below. Right, Luffy acknowledged. Swiftly, Luffy's elongated arms reached down, 
pulling Zoro onto the deck alongside him. This treasure chest is yours. Place it here and remember to take it when you leave, Zoro instructed, putting the chest near the railing. Inspecting the chest, Luffy remarked, setting off to sea alone without food but carrying a treasure chest, seems like you're obsessed with money. Ahem. Nami nearly choked on a piece of grilled fish, taken aback by Luffy's astute observation. You scoundrel. How did you figure that out so accurately? In truth, the chest had been stolen by Nami, but it only contained some tattered clothes, leaving her disappointed. When she witnessed Zoro bringing up the chest, she felt a twinge of unease. She had promised earlier to exchange the treasure for food with the trio. If they discovered the chest held no food, what might they do? However, Nami sensed something different now. She felt the three individuals before her showed no interest in her treasure chest. Even the green-haired man kindly reminded her not to forget it when she departed. Are they truly pirates? Wait, you don't plan to take my treasure? Nami asked cautiously, her doubts deepening. Absolutely, here's a revised version. Just a little effort, no need for payment, Logan confidently stated. It wasn't any trouble for us, Zoro added. Besides, we have money of our own. Why would we take yours? Nami's eyes nearly transformed into Bailey's shapes upon hearing Zoro's statement. Are you rich? Nami asked, her excitement palpable. Yet, yeah, Luffy confirmed, agreeing on their wealth. Earlier in Shell's town, Captain Morgan had been defeated. Following Logan's advice, they distributed all the wealth Morgan had amassed over the years, including the treasures seized from captured pirates. This totaled more than 100 million baileys. That sounds about right. We should have more than 100 million baileys, Zoro admitted honestly. Logan felt exasperated at this revelation. Great, just after inadvertently revealing that we are wealthy, we're now disclosing our family background. Zoro, Zoro, why did you have to say that? He speculated that Nami might already be scheming on how to pilfer the money. Fortunately, the money was under his protection, so he wasn't concerned about potential theft. Great. Really great. Nami's eyes were covered by the Bailey pattern. What's so great? Zoro asked, puzzled by Nami's inexplicable reaction. Oh, I meant it's nice to have wealth, Nami hastily corrected herself. You guys chat. I'm going to read some mangas, Luffy declared. After the meal and some exercise, he was eager to continue his adventures in the Akam GA Kill world. With three chances left today, he aimed to use them all. Seeing Luffy's enthusiasm, Zoro, in his training under Sasaki Kojiro, was equally driven. He wished he could spend every waking moment splitting wooden golem steaks. If I wasn't hungry and needed food, I'd live inside the mangas, Zoro remarked before joining Luffy. Left alone on the deck, Logan and Nami remained. These two are. Logan mused, realizing the alluring appeal of the manga he creates. You can help yourself to these grilled fish first. If it's not enough, there are ingredients in the kitchen, Logan assured Nami. Logan knew he didn't need to worry too much about Nami. She might have her eye on their money at most but wasn't the type to harm them. As for recruiting Nami, Logan wasn't in a rush. Luffy hadn't yet discovered Nami's sailing talent, but once he did, Nami would be roped in. Then, a few hour long dungeon challenges would seal the deal. In any case, just go with the flow, and everything will fall into place. Hey, are you leaving too? Nami suddenly grew suspicious, realizing that none of the other pirates she'd tricked ever paid attention to her. However, these three pirates in front of her were so skilled that they didn't even spare her a glance. Could it be that I'm not good enough, Nami wondered. Especially Logan, who exuded a sunny and handsome demeanor. If only he would cast his colorful gaze her way. With this realization, Nami felt a surge of discontent. Wait a moment. Anything else? This marked the first time Nami took such an assertive approach to taunting. She had spoken, yet her heart raced. Damn it. Why do I have to go to such lengths? Let's see if you won't surrender this time. However, Logan merely shrugged and casually remarked, remember to wash the dishes after eating. With that, he headed straight for the hatch. Ah. Nami was left dumbfounded, her mouth slightly agape. You, being so handsome, don't you have any sympathy? It's truly exasperating. Damn it. Ignoring such a beautiful woman before you, are you even a man? Stamping her little feet in anger, Nami fiercely shoved a large piece of grilled fish into her mouth, 
silver teeth biting down aggressively. She muttered fiercely to Logan's retreating figure, Humph, I'll make you pay. Chapter 30 Nami devoured half of the grilled fish left by Logan. As she washed the dishes, she absent-mindedly drew circles on them while expressing her frustrations with curses directed at Logan. After completing these chores, Nami pondered her next move. Should she wait until the next island to disembark, or... Lost in thought, Nami unconsciously made her way to the foredeck. No, why am I feeling compassion? They're pirates. The 100 million belly can't be earned through farming and selling good. These three guys plundered so much money. This money. I, Nami, want it. The more she contemplated, the more excited she became. Nami enthusiastically waved her small fist. Just as she finished speaking, something caught her eye from the corner, causing her to freeze. Slowly turning her head to the right. She spotted Luffy sitting there, engrossed in reading mangas. What? It's over, it's over, it's over. He must have heard what I just said, right? Why hasn't he reacted? Nami stood there with a guilty conscience, not daring to move. After a while, she didn't receive any reaction from Luffy, so she cautiously looked his way again. Hey? He's still immersed in reading mangas. Could it be, he didn't hear what I said to myself? With this in mind, Nami decided to test it out. Approaching Luffy, she pretended to be curious and asked, Hey, Straw Hat Kid, what are you looking at? Luffy, deeply absorbed in the manga world, didn't respond to Nami. It's so fascinating to watch. Observing Luffy's obliviousness, Nami felt a wave of relief. She then scanned the foredeck and found Zoro sitting on the mast, also engrossed in mangas. Strange. Since when did pirates start reading mangas? Nami shook her head, unable to comprehend. Suddenly, a spark of inspiration lit up in her large wine-red eyes. That's it. They're so engrossed in mangas, it's the perfect time for me to steal, uh, bring justice to the sky. Perfect. These two fools are really a great match. Sneaking off the foredeck, Nami discreetly slipped into the cabin. Apart from her, there were only three people on board. With both of them outside, as long as she avoided Logan, the whole ship would be exposed like a girl without clothes, and there would be no way to stop Nami. As a seasoned thief, Nami moved swiftly, searching from room to room. Stepping out of a door, Nami retraced her steps. Peeking through the crack of the door, she immediately saw a figure that irked her to the core. I never expected someone like him to be a mangaka. Observing Logan engrossed in drawing manga, Nami felt a strange mix of emotions. It suddenly dawned on her that Luffy and Zoro were currently reading mangas, so were they fans of Logan? Unexpectedly, he's so talented. She couldn't help but appreciate the attractiveness of a man focused on his craft. Especially someone as handsome and sunny as Logan when he concentrated, he was incredibly appealing. What am I thinking? I'm a thief. It's disrespectful to think about other things while in the midst of stealing. After some stern self-criticism, Nami averted her gaze. A quick glance revealed that there was no place to hide money in the studio, and the treasure wasn't there. Leaving the corridor, Nami continued her journey deeper into the cabin. Passing through a door, she entered what appeared to be a living area. Luffy, Zoro, Logan, Nami. Looked at the nameplates on the doors of the rooms ahead and couldn't help but smile. With only three people on board, did they really need nameplates on their doors in such a small space? In her heart, Nami silently cursed, finding these three people rather peculiar. However, if she knew the nameplates were genuinely posted because someone might get lost, she would likely be astonished. She began her search in Luffy's room, only to find nothing of interest. Zoro's room, on the other hand, revealed its secrets at a glance. Finally, she arrived at Logan's room. Upon entering, her gaze instinctively swept to the corner, where three large treasure chests were neatly arranged. It's actually hidden here. Filled with anticipation, she swiftly approached the first treasure chest and forcefully manipulated the lock spring. As the lid opened, a cascade of items spilled out with a crash. What is this? Her eyes fixated on the falling objects, unable to look away. Belly. Stacks of bundled belly. Her heart raced. Nami, with her extensive experience in acquiring wealth, she could tell at a glance that there were at least a million belly in these high denomination bundles. This was just a glimpse through a gap in the lid, and nearly a million belly had already tumbled out. What awaited within these three treasure chests? Nami's heart pounded wildly. 
The next moment, the first chest swung open completely. Hiss. Nami, who had stolen tens of millions of belly before, couldn't help but gasp at this revelation. Opening the second treasure chest. Hiss. I took another sharp breath. The third. Hiss. She still couldn't believe it. After taking three breaths, Nami found herself in a daze. Was this a dream? She pinched her thigh hard. What? The sharp pain confirmed that it wasn't a dream. Enough. Enough. The joy of happiness spread across her little face irresistibly. Nami threw herself directly onto the pile of belly, feeling their warmth with her heart. With this money, the promised 100 million belly for Arlong would surely be collected. Folks in Kokoyashi village, wait for me. I will rescue you from the shadow of fishman suppression. After indulging in the belly, Nami suddenly snapped back to reality. Ah! I almost got carried away. I have to get these belly away before they find out. She quickly covered the lid of the treasure chest and locked it tightly. Nami grabbed the handle and exerted force. On her slender arms, the beautiful lines were visible under the strain. However, she had never stolen such a large sum at once, and for the first time, she realized how heavy the money was. Even with all her strength, she could only move the first treasure chest less than a foot. But Nami was not one to give up. This money carried the hope of the entire Kokoyashi village. Now that it was within reach, she wouldn't give up no matter what. Shaking her sore arms, she took a deep breath and grabbed the handle again. Just as she was about to exert force, another very handsome man's palm landed on the handle of the treasure chest. Do you need help? The voice was so pleasant that it warmed Nami's heart. She responded instinctively, yet. Yeah. Chapter 31 Thank you so much for helping me. Nami expressed gratitude, genuinely happy for the assistance. But just as she spoke, a sudden realization hit her, prompting her to turn around. In her field of vision, a handsome, sunny face appeared, making Nami's teeth itch with hatred. What? Her guilty conscience betrayed her. Nami turned her head and met Logan's eyes, letting out a shock scream as she landed on the treasure chest behind her. Damn bastard! Why did he sneak up like a demon and scare her to death? Logan looked into Nami's eyes, shifted his gaze down, and finally settled on her pair of long skirts. Not bad, they are long and fair, a pair of good legs, he praised without hesitation. You, what are you doing? Being scrutinized by Logan in this manner, Nami felt a genuine unease. Despite her time wandering the seas, she was not a frivolous person. Even in the presence of the sunny and handsome Logan, Nami would, at most, stir up girlish feelings but would never allow her innocence to be tarnished. Facing Nami's discomfort, Logan suddenly adopted a mischievous demeanor. He rubbed his chin, returned his eyes to Nami's face with keen interest, and said with a smile, according to pirate customs, shouldn't I just pounce on you right now and teach you how to be a woman? You, how dare you? Nami instinctively recoiled, her little hand reflexively covering her heart, while the other was hidden behind her back. Wow! Such a lovely and pitiful girl. If I don't pounce on her, then... Logan teased with a playful smile, I won't be living up to my pirate reputation. Hey hey! Logan's sudden caught Nami off guard. It seemed as if Logan had effortlessly seen through her facade, and for the first time, genuine tension crept onto Nami's face. This man was too smart. Okay, no need to pretend. You're the famous little thief of East Blue. How can you freeze up in a situation like this? Logan maintained his spring-like smile as he took a step forward, bringing their bodies almost dangerously close. He casually glanced at Nami's concealed arm and then locked eyes with her. Is there something in that hand? I hope it's not a murder weapon. Logan's words elicited a surprised expression on Nami's pretty cheeks. Swiftly, she adjusted her demeanor offering a soft grin. He he, caught by you. But, I'm not thinking of killing anyone. I just want you, a big villain who doesn't know sympathy, to get a good night's sleep. Just sleep. As she spoke, Nami's hidden hand flicked forward, releasing a handful of red sleep powder towards Logan. Achoo. Logan coincidentally sneezed, blowing all the powder back towards Nami. What? Faced with the unexpected turn, Nami exclaimed. However, she had unwittingly inhaled all the sleep powder. You can. Lifting her arm, just as Nami's fingers were about to lift up, she suddenly swayed and passed out with a soft hum. Can I? 
the method of elimination must not be hateful, other things are optional. With wishful thinking, Logan gazed at Nami's face smeared with sleep powder. Then, acting like a gentleman, he wiped off the powder. When you're in danger, you just use sleep powder. You really are a cute little thief, he remarked with a gentle smile. Glancing at the time, he noted that it was almost time to rest. Time flew, and the next morning arrived. Hmm. Nami's slender body frowned slightly, and she let out a hum. Slowly opening her eyes, she rubbed her dizzy head with her hands. Turning her head, she saw that underneath her was... Belly. Hey? Only then did she realize that she was still in the same position as when she passed out, lying on top of the money the entire time. She looked inside the box, and more than 100 million belly were still there. And many more. Suddenly, Nami thought of something terrible. She quickly opened her collar and checked inside, then reached out and tugged at her shorts. After a careful inspection, Nami let out a long sigh of relief. But then, she turned her head saw Logan sleeping soundly on the bed. Nanny. Nami seriously had to question life. I'm lying here, a flowery girl, and this annoying guy didn't lay a finger on me. She didn't want him to do anything, but the fact that he didn't do anything when she didn't resist left Nami feeling unconvinced. Why didn't he act when the opportunity was right in front of him? Is it really that I, Nami, am unattractive? I can't be that bad. She's furious. Immediately, Nami hopped down from the treasure chest, intending to give Logan a piece of her mind. However, her movements seemed a bit too loud, causing Logan to turn over and leisurely open his eyes. Oh? Are you awake? Sitting up from the bed, Logan rubbed his sleepy eyes. He checked the time, realizing it was time to get up. Seeing Logan's nonchalant demeanor only fueled Nami's anger. Barefoot and without even putting on her shoes, she rushed up to Logan and questioned, You, you didn't take the opportunity to touch me yesterday. Um? Logan wore a perplexed expression. He looked up at Nami, who stood in front of him with a confused face. What do you mean? Could it be that you still want me to do something about you? Ah, no Nami realized she had asked an outrageous question, her cheeks flushing with embarrassment. She quickly changed the subject. You hateful guy, you sleep on the bed by yourself, but let me, a weak girl, sleep on money. It's too hateful. First, sleeping on more than 100 million belly is something that no one else dares to dream about. I let you sleep for one night for free. Are you not happy? Logan responded calmly. Second, this is my room. If I don't sleep on the bed, where should I sleep? While speaking, Logan walked to the cabinet next to him, opened the door, took out powdered milk, picked up the kettle, and made a cup of warm milk. Then he walked up to Nami with the cup of warm milk. Nami was secretly delighted. Hum making hot milk for others is such a heartwarming gesture. But her joy lasted only a second because the next moment, Logan took a sip of hot milk and continued to criticize the girl in front of him. It's you, we rescued you from the sea with good intentions, and you want to steal our money? Tell me, is this something people do? I. Nami had initially intended to complain about Logan not treating her well, but her cheeks turned red when faced with his serious questioning. Chapter 32 Thinking about stealing their money when someone saves me. That's really not something people do as Logan continued to criticize her. Nami began to feel flushed. In the early morning at sea, the temperature was very low. Even inside the cabin, it was chilly. Caught in a moral dilemma, Nami, unsure whether it was guilt or the cold air, couldn't help but shiver. Unable to face Logan's question directly, she deftly shifted the topic to him. In such cold weather, if you let a girl lie down like this all night and don't cover her with a blanket, aren't you afraid she'll catch a cold? Logan smiled lightly. What a cunning little thief! skillfully changing the subject. He could see that Nami had been lying there all night, and the cold was indeed seeping into her body. After a moment of thought, he handed the milk to her. Let's drink some hot milk first. Hey hey this is what you drank just now. Nami exclaimed, eyes widening. Yesterday, you made people eat your leftover grilled fish, and today you want them to drink your leftover milk? When did I, Nami, ever deserve such a thing? Logan raised an eyebrow contemplating withdrawing the milk. Oh, forget it he sighed. No, I want it. Nami quickly took it, not letting him change his mind. If I'm not really hungry and cold, I wouldn't want to drink what you left. Aggrieved and complaining, 
Nami gulped down the hot milk. Perhaps due to genuine hunger and cold, she drank too quickly, causing milk to overflow from the corner of her mouth, tracing down her fair neck. Wiping the milk away, Nami handed the cup to Logan, saying, More. You drink so crisply. Aren't you afraid that I'll poison it? Logan teased, a playful glint in his eyes. Logan put the cup aside, his eyes playful as he looked at Nami. She shook her head, saying, Why be afraid? If you wanted to harm me, you could have done it while I was asleep. Why bother now? Logan smiled, Oh? From this perspective, your evaluation of me isn't bad. Hanami pouted slightly, giving him a blank look. Still curious, she asked, What kind of person are you? In that situation last night, you didn't touch anyone. You're really strange. Could it be that I, Nami, am not attractive? Impossible. While she was relieved to still have her perfect body, she wanted to find out if the other party was looking down on her. Logan was also speechless, shrugging. You seem to want me to do something to you. Hey, Nami blushed immediately, saying angrily, What? I just... After a moment's thought, she realized how strange her question was. I just think your behavior is too unlike a pirate, so I'm curious. This is the first time I've been in such a passive situation after being a thief for so long. I was scared to death, but now that you're like this, I really don't know whether I should be afraid. Blaming Logan, yet subtly showing her innocence. Well. With a faint smile on his handsome face, Logan was silent for a moment and then said, Don't you want to be glad that you met me this time? Yeah, if it were another pirate, I'd be finished. Pirates in the sea are vicious, one worse than the other. Even now, Nami still has lingering fears. Okay, it's almost time for me to draw mangas. I have to go to the studio. If you still want milk, you can make it yourself. By the way, don't forget to wash my cup. Logan glanced at the clock on the wall. Hey! Seeing that Logan was about to leave, Nami suddenly yelled. What? Logan asked while folding the blanket. Nami rushed behind Logan. You can't leave, I have a question and I must ask it clearly. Ask. Logan put the blanket and pillow away together without looking up. You saved me, but I wanted to steal your money. According to common sense, if you caught me, even if you didn't do anything to me, you would beat me, scold me, or even kill me. But why, not only did you not do this, but you didn't even blame me at all. Why is that? This doubt had been lingering in Nami's heart and she wouldn't feel well if she didn't ask it clearly. It was like a child who had made a mistake, ready to accept punishment from their father at any time. But her father never mentioned the punishment, leaving Nami's heart hanging in suspense. Only those who have experienced this feeling know how uncomfortable it can be. Hearing Nami's question, Logan stood up and turned to look at her behind him. Nami also looked at Logan, awaiting his answer. However, instead of answering, Logan just gazed into Nami's eyes. Feeling Logan's unscrupulous gaze, Nami felt at a loss. Logan smiled and said, Why don't you tell me first, why does a beautiful girl like you want to be a villain that everyone hates? A pretty girl. I'll just say it. How could I, Nami, not attract him? Looks like this guy has a good eye. What are you thinking about? Logan wondered as he observed Nami's strange expression. Ah Nami woke up from her wild thoughts but met Logan's close gaze, feeling suddenly guilty me. She faltered, her mind going blank. For Logan's question, she could have easily made up a lie to deal with it. However, at this moment, she found that she couldn't organize any lies in her mind. More importantly, there was a voice in her heart telling herself that she didn't want to deceive Logan. The secret is a secret, but if there's someone to confide in, wouldn't that be a kind of happiness? After a fierce internal struggle, Nami took a deep breath, raised her head, met Logan's gaze, and lightly parted her red lips. If I tell you that I actually stole money to save many, many people, do you believe it? After speaking, Nami's petite heart became uneasy. This was a secret she had always kept. But when this secret is told, the logic is outrageous. She was afraid a hundred out of a hundred people wouldn't believe it. I believe you, Logan answered without hesitation. Hey? Do you believe it? Nami's eyes widened in disbelief. She couldn't comprehend why Logan would choose to believe her without hesitation. Was it because of her appearance? If so, then she received that from Logan just last night. 
Do you really believe it? I'm just a little thief, Nami questioned. I believe you, Logan answered firmly once again. He smiled, placing his hand on Nami's fragrant shoulder, and spoke in a gentle voice, You know what? Everyone can lie, but a person's eyes can't lie. I saw honesty in your eyes when you spoke. The slender palm covered the reddening face, and Nami's eyes turned red in an instant. Since the Arlong pirates occupied Kokoyashi village, her life had been shrouded in shadows. Nami bore the infamy alone, facing accusations and incomprehension from everyone. For years, she had only cried in secret during the dead of night to release the inner grievance and pain. No one believed her, and no one understood her. But at this moment, the handsome and sunny man in front of her, though they had just met, chose to believe her without hesitation, simply by seeing the honesty in her eyes. For Nami, who had experienced so much suffering, Logan's words were like a ray of sunshine in stormy weather, breaking through the clouds and mist, reaching directly to Nami's heart. It brought her a warmth she had never experienced before. All the way, Nami had felt wronged, too wronged. Now, she suddenly received the care and trust she didn't dare to expect at ordinary times. All the grievances and pain accumulated in her heart were released at once. Wow! She opened her arms, throwing herself into Logan's embrace, burying her face on his shoulders. Tears gushed out like a fountain. Her weak body trembled non-stop, and at this moment, Nami forgot about everything the Arlong pirates, Kokoyashi village, Nojiko, Belmere, Belly. None of it mattered anymore. She just wanted to cry. Chapter 33 Up until this point, I've been part of the Arlong pirates for eight years. Sitting side by side on the bed, Nami shared her story with Logan. As she poured out her heart, Nami felt a sense of liberation like never before. In the midst of her narrative, Nami suddenly mimicked the motion of a cat's claw with her small fist, saying in an endearing manner, So, even though I'm a thief, I've never stolen money from ordinary people. Logan smiled and asked, So, you wanted to steal our money because we're pirates? Nami nodded, a mischievous smile on her face, Exactly. Pirates are considered bad people, so stealing from them is considered a good deed. Upon hearing this, Logan disagreed, I don't agree with what you said. Who said all pirates are bad guys? Of course. Where can there be good people among pirates? Especially those vicious fishmen and pirates who brought disaster to my hometown. As Nami said this, she thought of the deceased Belmere, and her eyes turned red again. What about me? Logan pointed to himself. If pirates don't have good people, am I not a pirate? Not counting, Nami replied without hesitation. Why? Logan shrugged gesturing for Nami to explain. Nami pointed to the corner of the room, those money, there are more than 100 million. Didn't you snatch them from the civilians along the way? Of course not. Logan shook his head. These are all the stolen funds that Captain Morgan, the captain of the Marine base in Shell's town, has seized from captured pirates over the years. Marines! Nami exclaimed. Wait, you said Morgan. Hearing the name clearly, Nami looked surprised. How could that guy, who is called the Taboo of Shell's Town, give you the stolen money? It seems you know of his notoriety. Yes, he committed numerous atrocities in Shell's Town, killing innocent people. Luffy and I went to rescue Zoro and defeated him. The Marines and civilians there were liberated. We then distributed the stolen money from the civilians back to them, while the money seized from the pirates was taken by us, Logan explained. You actually defeated Morgan. After hearing Logan's words, Nami opened her mouth in even greater shock. Logan nodded affirmatively, saying, Yes, it's not a secret. The East Blues News Agency should have published this matter in the newspapers soon. Then you'll see that what I said is true. Oh, no, no. I didn't doubt you, I was just taken aback. For a man who believes so much in himself, how could Nami doubt him? Moreover, Nami was thrilled to discover that the Baileys in Logan's room were just stolen money from pirates. Um, sure enough, I was right about him. You guys are amazing. Nami gave a thumbs up, with envy and admiration in her eyes. If they can help me. No. As soon as the idea of asking Logan for help entered her mind, Nami immediately dismissed it. Although Morgan is powerful, he is far behind the Arlong pirates. If the Marines were effective, how could the Arlong pirates have been a threat to the Jamiada Islands for so many years? They defeated Captain Morgan but the fishmen are ten times stronger than humans. 
if they ventured to the other side's Arlong, wouldn't that be suicidal? No, 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 no. Nami resolutely rejected the idea of seeking help. A and D. She had her own plan, and she could redeem the village sooner or later. Nami's heart skipped a beat as her gaze inadvertently landed on the treasure chest full of Baileys. Correct. If she could borrow money from Logan, then. Thinking of this, though Nami couldn't admit it, for the sake of the village, she still blushed and spoke. Logan, can you lend me some money? After saying this, Nami quickly lowered her head. She knew it was abrupt, and the other party had no obligation to lend it to her. Even when she wanted to steal money before, she wouldn't complain if Logan refused her. Is it to redeem the village? Yes, I've saved a lot, but I'm still short of 40 million berries. I know it's a substantial amount, but trust me, I'll definitely pay you back. Discussing matters like borrowing money is always challenging. Perhaps worried that Logan might not agree, Nami hastily added, Don't worry, I won't run away. If I can't pay it back, I'll work for you my entire life. Work for a living? Impossible. Impossible in a lifetime. You are a crew of our straw hat pirates. Logan shook his head, it's not impossible to borrow money. Nami's heart sank. Really? How could anyone be willing to lend such a large sum of money? But just a second after her disappointment, Logan's hand fell on her shoulder. But, the matter of the Arlong pirates is on us. Ah? About the Arlong pirates? No, 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 no. Not only did Nami not feel joy, but her face tensed. She refused outright, if you don't want to lend money, I have no complaints. But you really shouldn't get involved with the Arlong pirates. Are you worried that we can't handle the Arlong pirates? It was evident that Nami wasn't trying to protect the Arlong pirates but lacked awareness of the Straw Hat pirates' current strength. This girl didn't want them to send her to her death. Even though you defeated Morgan, you don't understand the power of fishmen's at all. Their physique is more than ten times that of humans. If you encounter them, you'll surely be killed by them. Nami didn't hold back, informing Logan directly and warning him not to be overconfident. You don't need to worry about this. I've heard about those guys from the Arlong Pirates. We can handle it completely. At this point, Logan wasn't concerned. Even in the original plot, as long as the Straw Hats remained the same, they could defeat the Arlong Pirates. And now? Our captain has already activated the third gear. How many rotten fish and shrimps do you think can pose a threat to us? To put it bluntly, they're not even worth fitting between our teeth. I won't listen. You don't understand fishmen's at all. Anyway, I don't need your help with my affairs. I can make enough money by saving up slowly. Nami simply covered her ears, tucked her legs into her arms, and buried her head in her knees. No matter what you say, I won't agree. How could I watch you go to your death? Seeing Nami's insistence, Logan was genuinely moved. Despite the flawed approach, Nami was genuinely concerned about the members of their straw hat pirates. After a moment of contemplation, Logan decided not to argue further. If Nami wanted to use money to solve the problem, then so be it. In the end, they would realize that money alone couldn't resolve the issue with the Arlong pirates. They would ultimately rely on their fists. Turning to the determined Nami, Logan reached out, grabbed her little hand, opened it, and said with a smile, Okay. Then I will lend you the money. No, no, no. Nami thought Logan was going to insist on confronting the Arlong pirates. However, as she was about to refuse, she sensed something was amiss. Really, really. After a moment's reflection, Nami felt that asking for money in such a situation might be a moral burden. She pursed her lips, If it's too much trouble, I don't need it trouble? Whether it's 100 million berry or 50 million berry, it's the same for us. They're more than enough for us to spend. As for you, didn't you say if you can't repay the money, you'll work for us? I accept that condition. Logan smiled wryly. Comforting the borrower, as the creditor, was his role. Upon hearing this, Nami was utterly moved. Logan. I. 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 Her mouth trembled with excitement making it difficult to speak fluently. With the money, she could achieve the goal she had been striving for. With the money, her miserable days with the Arlong pirates would be over. With the money, the village could be reborn. Thousands of words finally condensed into one sentence, Thank you, woo-woo-woo. Nami was moved to tears again. 
Crying again, you little thief, Logan smiled, turned Nami's head, and pressed it onto his shoulder. Chapter 34 A few days later. On a misty morning, the pirate ship docked in Orange Town. The members of the Straw Hats disembarked to make purchases. At noon, Logan returned to the pier with some daily necessities and fruits. Upon getting on the deck and placing the items down, Logan noticed that Luffy had returned, accompanied by two large sacks of meat. Haven't the other two returned yet? Logan glanced around the deck, wondering why it was taking so long. I didn't see them, they should be back soon, Luffy said, reclining with his hands behind his head. Uh oh. Suddenly, Logan slapped his forehead. How could I forget? Zoro is a directional challenged idiot. I shouldn't have let him go alone. But what about Nami? Could she be up to another theft? It didn't seem likely. She stole money for the sake of the village, and now that he had agreed to lend her money, there was no reason for her to steal. Changing his posture, Luffy turned his legs up and casually remarked, Well, Zoro might be directionally challenged, but this small town isn't that big. The main streets intersect, leading straight to the pier. Zoro shouldn't get lost. Logan responded seriously, No, he really can get lost. Given that Luffy had only spent a few days with Zoro, he had yet to fully grasp the extent of Zoro's sense of direction. Logan, however, knew that Zoro's lack of direction had reached extraordinary levels. People often say that where there are enough people walking, a path forms. Yet, in Zoro's case, no matter how clear a path may be, he manages to lose it. Ignoring Luffy's nonchalant response, Logan urged, Stop lazing around, let's find them. Logan pulled Luffy up and they disembarked from the ship. The two made their way to the middle of the intersection, where several stores were situated. Old man, did you see a green-haired swordsman and a girl with orange hair? Logan inquired as they reached the door of a noodle shop. The boss shook his head. I didn't see them, but people from the buggy pirates were here just now. They seemed to be looking for someone called... Nami. Could it be the two people you mentioned? What? The buggy pirates are looking for Nami. Logan's face turned serious upon hearing this. He felt a surge of anger. Why else would the buggy pirates be searching for Nami if not because she had stolen something from them? Even after borrowing money, she still resorted to thievery. Was it true that a legendary thief never changes? Let's go. We need to save Nami. Determined, Logan pulled Luffy up and rushed outside. Hey, hey. Those are the buggy pirates. The noodle shop owner tried to warn them of the danger but Logan's swift pace carried them out of earshot in an instant. As for the whereabouts of the buggy pirates, Logan, being a seasoned traveler, knew where to find them. After running for a distance, they encountered Zoro sprinting towards them. Hey, hey. I found you guys. That woman on our ship was captured by the buggy pirates. Let's save her. Zoro informed them, grabbing Logan and Luffy, and heading back towards the noodle shop. Idiot. The buggy pirates are here. Logan pointed in the direction behind Zoro, his face showing frustration. To the east of town lay the home base of the buggy pirates. That damn thief. She actually stole my nautical chart. That's crucial for me to return to the Grand Line in the future. Buggy paced back and forth in the yard, infuriated. Don't just stand there. Hit him. Beat him to death. Pointing at the captured villagers, Buggy angrily reprimanded them. These villagers had been randomly apprehended along the way, and Buggy, uncertain if they knew about Nami's whereabouts, decided to beat them first. Whipping down his weapon, Kabeji struck one of the villagers, prompting immediate wails. The villager, in pain, confessed, Stop the beating. I saw her. Say. Where is she? Buggy demanded, lifting the villager through the air with a swift palm. The villager, grinning through the pain, uttered with horror. I saw her running back to you just now. Running back here? Buggy's sharp eyes scanned the yard and eventually locked onto a big box. The box's position seemed different from before. Without hesitation, Buggy commanded, Get the buggy cannon. Blast that box. A girl's scream erupted from the box, and Nami crawled out from above. It's actually a girl. Ah ha ha. She's so pretty. Tut tisk tisk the pirates in the yard showed red eyes captivated by Nami's appearance. Upon seeing Nami, Buggy's expression turned fierce. He coldly declared, Dare to steal my things. Damn it. His palm swiftly launched, 
and his dagger struck Nami's chest. What? Nami never expected Buggy to act without a word, denying her any chance to escape. To avoid the incoming attack, Nami jumped towards a nearby box. However, the thrown dagger unexpectedly changed direction midair, chasing after her. It's over. In midair, Nami couldn't alter her course, and the fast flying sword posed a grave threat. If Buggy showed no mercy, she would surely meet her demise. Facing this moment of life and death, Nami felt an overwhelming sadness. Kokoyashi village was on the brink of salvation, and yet, she might perish before witnessing its liberation. The villagers had no chance of regaining their freedom, and she wouldn't be able to fulfill her promise to redeem the village. Her motive for stealing the nautical chart wasn't selfish. She had heard from Logan that they were heading to the Grand Line, and Nami understood the importance of having the charts for such a journey. In exchange for Logan's promise to lend her money for the village, Nami had resolved to steal the Grand Line's map. Now, facing imminent death, she thought of Logan. By the time he saw her lifeless body, she knew she wouldn't be able to explain to him, her true intentions. He would likely believe she had reverted to her thieving ways. Logan. If only she could see him one last time before her demise, to prevent being misunderstood. He was the first person to believe in her just by looking at her. She desperately wished to be understood by him. Suddenly, in her desperate thoughts, she saw the illusion of Logan before her. It's great, I can still see you before I die. I'm satisfied, she thought, even though it was merely an illusion. Although I am very angry now, I will deal with you later. Surprisingly, the hallucination spoke. But the next moment, shock engulfed her. No. This wasn't an illusion. The sadness on her face transformed into excitement and joy. Ah. Logan, you came to save me. She exclaimed. Of course. If I don't come, you will die. Logan embraced Nami in midair, then extended his right hand and caught the flying dagger. Chapter 35 There's actually a helper. You all going to die for me. Buggy flipped his other palm, and three daggers with a cold glow suddenly flew out. With a whoosh, they were thrown straight at Nami and Logan. Logan, be careful. Nami, quick-witted as always, immediately noticed Buggy's attack. Clang. With the light of the sword, Zoro's figure appeared in front of the two of them, intercepting the three daggers simultaneously with a single sword. Are you all here? Nami felt a wave of relief seeing more people on her side. Of course. You're such a troublemaker, woman. Zoro, too, was angered. Had heard from passers-by that Buggy had arrested Nami for theft. Wow. Finally caught up. Luffy bounced off the wall and landed next to Logan and Nami. So many helpers. Good. Very good. Buggy, angered by the reinforcements, clapped his hands and gave an order, get them all, kill them all. Well let's do this. Luffy rubbed his shoulders, ready for action. But Zoro stopped him, I can take care of this, we don't need the captain to take action for the small trouble. Luffy froze for a moment. This, actually makes sense. Logan couldn't help but complain in his heart. It's clear that the green-haired swordsman has a penchant for fighting alone, leaving so many opponents for himself. But can he really do it? Clang. Zoro unsheathed his sword. Originally a three-sword style, Zoro now had only one sword left due to the battle between Shell's Town and Luffy, where the other two were damaged. Brothers, he's alone, get him. Go. The minions of the buggy pirates rushed forward. Zoro gripped his S-words with both hands, his steps steady. One slash. A pirate fell to the ground. One slash. Another pirate bit the dust. One slash. Pirates continued to fall. These pirates rushing toward Zoro appeared to him like a stack of wooden golems. All Zoro had to do was slash down and then slash again. Despite having only practiced against the wooden golem stack for a few days, in the world of the mangas, time flowed differently. Zoro's proficiency wasn't just from a few days but represented several months, or even more than a year, of practice. Hey! What are you idiots doing? That guy only uses the same moves all the time. Are you idiots? Why are you lining up to be cut by him? Kabeji, the chief of staff of the buggy pirates, a master of swords himself, found the situation ridiculous. He couldn't fathom how anyone could repeatedly perform the same slashing action from start to finish. Furthermore, the pirates on his side seemed like fools, willingly offering their heads one by one. Get out of the way. 
Furious at the perceived incompetence, Kabeji rushed toward Zoro on his unicycle. The chief of staff is here. Compared to his strength, everyone else is weak in front of the chief of staff. This green hair is finished. Seeing Kabeji taking action, the pirates became excited. The battle seemed destined to end soon now that the chief of staff was involved. These trespasser will easily defeated. As Kabeji approached Zoro, the unicycle under his foot moved with agility, creating a cloud of smoke. Acrobatics and steam murder case. A lot of smoke drifted toward Zoro. This is the chief of staff's forte. Okay. The green-haired swordsman has no vision. It's really powerful. Amidst the applause and cheers of all the pirates, Kabeji's figure burst out from the smoke and stabbed Zoro straight in the face. Brush. Zoro countered with a swift slash. What? Kabeji screamed and was knocked to the ground. The cheers around suddenly stopped, replaced by the confused look on the faces of these pirates. What's the situation? Didn't he say that we are idiots, and he go up and be hacked by the green hair like us? Not only the pirates were stunned, but even Logan was stunned. What happened to Zoro? If I remember correctly, in the original plot, Zoro and Kabeji should have fought back and forth, and finally, Zoro won by a narrow margin. But why did Zoro in front of him defeated Kabeji with a single blow? And what's with that weird slash? It seems that in this world version, not only is Luffy training early, but Zoro too. It seems that I just need to brush my speed and defense with peace of mind, play support, and so on, and it will be safe. Zoro slashed over Kabeji with a sword, and looked at the pirates in front of him. Since no one dared to move forward, Zoro took the initiative to attack. One sword. One sword. The pirates were like wooden stakes, constantly falling under Zoro's swinging sword. Bastard. Let me deal with you. Buggy flew into a rage, his feet still on the ground, but his body from the ankles up was flying. He spun rapidly, with a dagger in each hand, elbow, and knee. At such high speeds, Buggy resembled a super dart. Whoosh, whoosh. One slash. Buggy was split straight in half. Captain. The captain is dead. What? This scene left all the pirates in stunned silence. Zoro, after chopping Buggy, paid no attention to the so-called captain at all. Who would care about him for the price of one slash? However, as Zoro continued attacking other pirates, a hand emerged from Buggy's corpse and stabbed Zoro's back from a tricky angle. You bastard, proud of yourself. It's a pity that many idiots had already fallen victim to Uncle Buggy's beckoning hands. With that thought, Buggy attempted to stab Zoro's back fiercely. However, with a sudden effort, the blade couldn't move an inch. Um? Buggy's head lying on the ground observed his flying hand and realized that Logan had appeared at some point. Logan held Buggy's blade in his hand, and there was no sign of bleeding. For super defense, this blade was as effective as mud. Hey! A wound on the back is the shame of the swordsman. You red nose, don't use this sneak attack to hit a swordsman's back and shame the swordsman. As he spoke, Logan impartially stepped on Buggy's red nose. Buggy let out a piercing scream. Chapter 36 Um? Only then did Zoro notice that Buggy was not dead. If Logan hadn't made a timely move just now, then his back would really have been cut open by Buggy. As Logan said, the wound on the back is the shame of a swordsman. So Buggy's sneak attack made Zoro very angry. You bastard. Zoro turned around, swung the sword in his hand, and chopped Buggy into pieces. But in the next moment, all the fragments of Buggy floated up, reorganizing a nearly complete body in the air. Why can't it be killed? Zoro frowned slightly, puzzled. He has the capabilities of the split split fruit, and slashing is ineffective against him, Logan reminded. As soon as the words came out, Buggy became angry. You actually know my power, you really planned to deal with me a long time ago. What are you talking about? We don't even know you, Luffy picked his nostrils and walked over. But, since slashing doesn't work for you, then try my fist. As he spoke, Luffy flicked his legs and jumped into the sky. Gomo Gomo no giganto pistol. In the air, Luffy blew on his finger, and his arm suddenly turned into a fist as big as a small hill. Nanny. Just looking at the size of the fist, Buggy's eyes almost popped out. He didn't even have time to dodge, Luffy's huge fist directly covered Buggy and then fell fiercely to the ground. What? Amidst Buggy's screams, the bone balloon came into close contact with the ground. Boom. 
It seemed like the whole island was shaking. SHH. The bone balloon deflated, revealing a large crater in the ground. Pit. Buggy lay flat on all fours. How should we deal with him? Luffy molded his chin, as if in deep thought. We can't let him go, he is a famous big pirate. I asked just now, he terrorized many people in this small town. Nami, always astute, immediately made a suggestion. By the way, he was going to hit me with a buggy cannon just now. Nami added, her anger rising at the thought of the danger she had faced. Thinking about the near-death experience, Nami became furious. If Logan hadn't appeared in time, she might be a corpse now. Hey, hey, you are the one who stole our captain map first. Ricky, the deputy captain, stood up to defend Buggy, trying to shift blame. It makes sense. Nami stole your things, and you wanted to catch her, that's fine, Logan nodded. Hey. Nami looked at Logan, feeling a bit aggrieved. But they are bad people in the first place. Stealing from bad people is a good thing. Without entertaining Nami's sophistry, Logan turned to Ricky. But she is our friend, and it's okay for us to save our friend. Then, is everyone clear? Ricky glanced at Buggy, asking Logan cautiously. Logan stated, our affairs are settled, but you need to address the matter of the buggy pirates harming Orange Town. Hey. Kid. If you have something to say, say it. At this time, Buggy seemed to have recovered a little and struggled on the ground. Now you know how to talk properly. Didn't you just want to bombard Nami with a cannon? Logan retorted, his gaze fixed on Buggy. Upon hearing this, Logan grinned, knelt down, and playfully flicked Buggy's red nose with his hands. How could I let you off so easily? Buggy retorted, then what's your plan? Are you planning to kill me? You can't joke about something like that. Despite Buggy's ruthless nature, he only displayed it when facing the weak. With his nose bruised and his face swollen, he was naturally more compliant. Logan assured, don't worry, there's no need to kill you. But. I've got a brilliant idea. His gaze fixated on the nearby Buggy cannon. Since Buggy enjoyed bombarding others with the buggy cannon, why not let him experience it firsthand? In a matter of moments, Buggy found his head and hands stuffed into the cannon barrel, packed to the brim. Bastard! Stop! Buggy yelled frantically from inside the barrel. Logan shrugged, then turned to Zoro. Light it up! All right. Every man harbors a dream of firing a cannon, even Zoro, a swordsman, relished the idea of personally operating the cannon. Boom. With the deafening roar of the cannon, Zoro felt a sense of exhilaration. Cannons are undeniably entertaining. One more shot left, Luffy, want to give it a try? Logan asked as he continued stuffing Buggy into the cannon barrel. Sure. Luffy eagerly rubbed his hands together and approached the cannon. Seems a bit unfair, Logan remarked with a few more shoves into the cannon barrel. Buggy's legs protested vigorously, almost hitting Logan. Let me do it. Luffy exclaimed, delivering a kick that landed squarely on Buggy's, lower region. The two legs twitched abruptly and then slid into the barrel with a swish. Hey, fire in hole. Luffy grinned widely, revealing a big smile, and ignited the fuse. Boom. Buggy's lower body was sent flying into the distance. Oh, that's not good. Luffy suddenly wore an apologetic expression. It seems like I launched in a different direction than Zoro. It's fine. That's their problem, Logan shrugged, then gestured towards Ricky and the others. He pointed at Ricky and the rest, saying, You've got one hour to transfer all the treasures to our ship. After that, leave this island and find your captain. If any of you haven't left after an hour, I'll use the buggy cannon to send you thousands of miles away. Upon hearing this, the pirates felt like they had been granted a reprieve and hurriedly began scrambling and crawling to carry out the orders. At night, Orange Town was devoid of any Buggy Pirates crew members. By the port, several Straw Hat Pirates members were getting ready to depart. At that moment, a multitude of Orange Town townspeople rushed over, carrying bacon, vegetables, eggs, and other supplies. They eagerly handed them to the Straw Hat Pirates. That's enough, really. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, it's unnecessary. Uh, hello? Whose kid is this? We're not into human trafficking. Amidst the grateful farewells of the townspeople, the Straw Hat Pirates left Orange Town. Chapter 37 In the evening, Logan completed a day's worth of manga work. 
Upon returning to his room, he found Nami sitting on his bed. Upon seeing Logan, Nami immediately stood up, wearing an expression reminiscent of a child who had made a mistake. There you are. I was wondering why I couldn't find you, Logan remarked, closing the door with a stern tone. Earlier in the day, when everyone left Orange Town, Logan had intended to question Nami. However, upon returning to the boat, Nami had executed a bath escape and avoided appearing in front of Logan. Unwilling to engage in a futile game of hide-and-seek on the boat, Logan proceeded with his manga work. Unexpectedly, Nami had been hiding in his room the entire time. As Logan approached, Nami licked her red lips and lowered her head slightly. Do you know what I'm going to say? Logan, towering over Nami, asked in a stern, teacher-like voice. Um. Nami nodded, assuming a progressively more endearing posture. You. Logan couldn't help but feel furious at Nami for admitting guilt and accepting punishment in such a manner. Taking a deep breath, he placed his hands on his hips and sternly asked, Didn't you promise me not to steal money again? Sorry, I already know I was wrong. Nami placed her two small hands on her heart, appearing cute and pitiful. Knowing? Is it enough to just acknowledge that you were wrong? In the past, you stole to save money for your hometown, and I completely understand that. Now that I've promised to lend you money, why do you still want to steal? Logan's frustration was evident in his voice. If I hadn't found out in time today, you might have been in serious trouble. Nami, you really disappointed me today. Perhaps because he cared deeply, Logan's anger was palpable. It seemed that the idealized Nabo from everyone's pirate fantasies did not match the reality of someone who stubbornly clung to their old ways. Listening to Logan's stern criticism, Nami didn't protest. Instead, she felt a strange happiness. It turned out this guy cared so much about her. Especially the words, if I didn't find out in time today, you might have died, struck a chord with Nami. Just admit it, you care about me. She thought, though there was a caveat. Yet, people steal nautical charts for you, and you scold them without discrimination. The tone is still so fierce. Feeling wronged once again, Nami suddenly burst into tears. Wow Nami sniffled, her nose sore. Cry, cry, cry. Do you think crying can erase your money theft? Logan's tone remained stern. Speak. Why did you want to steal money? Logan glared at Nami with frustration. Raising her head, Nami looked back at Logan with a pleading gaze. I... I didn't steal the money. No money stolen. Logan frowned. Then why were the buggy pirates after you? Nami's nose twitched as she mumbled, I... I stole a nautical chart. With that, Nami shaped a crumpled piece of paper and handed it to Logan. Opening it, Logan confirmed that it was indeed a nautical chart. Why would you steal this? He inquired. Because you're heading to the Grand Line, and it's incredibly perilous. Without a navigation chart for the Grand Line, even the most experienced crews wouldn't dare venture into those waters. While shopping in Orange Town, I heard that the buggy pirates hail from the Grand Line. I thought they must have charts for that area, Nami explained, lowering her head. You. Logan began to understand. Like this it appears it seems. Maybe I blamed Nami wrongly? Logan wondered. At that moment, Nami continued, regardless, I did steal again and let you down. Logan, hit me. Nami extended her small, white hands, akin to an elementary school student awaiting punishment from her teacher. I. Now that things were clarified, Logan couldn't find it in himself to blame Nami, let alone administer any punishment. He had reprimanded her fiercely earlier and Nami was likely feeling aggrieved. With that realization, Logan felt a pang of apology. Nami. Gently, he wrapped his palm around Nami's head and, with a tender force, pressed her head into his arms. After adjusting his breathing and calming down, Logan sincerely confessed in Nami's pink ear, I blamed you. He <laughs> he. The corners of Nami's mouth lifted slightly, and a hint of happiness sparkled in her wine-red eyes, resembling jewels. You rascal you can finally coax people. Chapter 38 Logan held Nami for a while, lightly patting her head, and whispered softly, after you save your hometown, come to the sea with us, okay. When it came to recruiting crew members, Logan initially had a laissez-faire mentality, letting things unfold naturally. However, realizing that things rarely progress as one hopes, he decided to take a more proactive approach this time, doing what a captain ought to do. In any case, 
when Luffy found out about Nami's sailing talents, he would undoubtedly insist on her joining the Straw Hat Pirates. Since it had to happen sooner or later, why not now? Let's set sail together. Okay, Logan said sincerely. Hearing the heartfelt invitation, Nami's body trembled slightly. It's tempting. I'd love to answer like that. But she couldn't. Even if the village could be redeemed from the Arlong pirates with 100 million baileys, Nami knew that her bargaining power lay in being the navigator of the Arlong pirates. If she proposed leaving, Arlong would undoubtedly turn hostile. Kokoyashi village would lose any chance of freedom. With these thoughts in mind, Nami tightly hugged Logan, biting her lip as she said with difficulty, No, I prefer to stay in my hometown. You prefer to stay at home. Logan couldn't be fooled by that statement. He knew how much Nami yearned for the sea since childhood. You say you don't want to go to sea. Despite her reluctance, Nami clung to the facade, trapped by circumstances beyond her control. The possibility was there. Logan fully understood why Nami categorically denied the invitation it was evidently because of the Arlong pirates. However, Nami deliberately avoided mentioning anything about the Arlong pirates. Why? Because she didn't want to involve Logan and the others. Rather than enduring the pain herself and going against her own heart, Nami chose not to bring trouble to the people who had helped her. For this act alone, Logan deeply admired and approved of Nami. Indeed, the eyes of a seafaring enthusiast couldn't be wrong. It wasn't without reason that Nami had become a favorite among the Straw Hats. No. You're lying to me. Logan lifted Nami's little face from his chest, wiped away the tears with his thumb, and stared at her intently. You're lying to yourself too. Under Logan's gaze, Nami's heart trembled. Ah, how could she forget? This man had said that a person's eyes couldn't lie. He must have seen through her. Who would study navigation so much if it wasn't for going to sea and exploring the world? Nami, tell me, do you want to go to sea? Logan asked earnestly. I. Nami's voice trembled. She couldn't admit it, but she didn't want to deceive Logan any longer, so she averted her eyes. Logan however, held Nami's cheeks with a little force, preventing her from avoiding his gaze. He spoke seriously again, as long as you tell me that you want to go to sea, I will take you out to sea. Grievances flooded Nami's moving, pitiful face like a tide. Nevertheless, she shook her head firmly. No don't say any more. Please, I really can't go to sea with you. As she spoke, tears rolled down her face. She couldn't bring herself to look into Logan's eyes. Is it because of the Arlong pirates? Logan asked in a deep voice. No. No. Nami raised her head abruptly, denying in shock. Before Nami could say more, Logan covered her lips with two fingers. Don't tell me, let me tell you, he said. Are you worried that if I find out about the Arlong pirates, our straw hat pirates will go to war with them? You're more concerned that, once the war starts, we'll be at the mercy of the Arlong pirates' fishmen. Nami. Just because you can think like this, I can't sit idly by. Listen, Nami. We, the Straw Hat Pirates, will take care of the Arlong Pirates. What? Hearing this, Nami felt a sense of despair. She urgently exclaimed, No. Logan, I beg you, please don't provoke the Arlong Pirates. It was the first time Nami cared so much about a man since growing up. It wasn't just because Logan promised to lend her money. Along the way, Nami had gradually come to know Logan, and the Marine Morgan who ruled with evil had been wiped out, Buggy, the notorious pirate, was easily defeated, and Logan never took advantage of her vulnerability all of these things made Nami deeply appreciate Logan. More importantly, he was willing to believe in her. Nami cherished such a person. Even though she knew that Logan, Luffy, and Zoro were strong, having defeated even the formidable pirate Buggy with ease, Nami still didn't want them to take the risk of dealing with the Arlong pirates. If they were to face the Arlong pirates and lose, falling into the hands of the mermaids would spell certain death. Nami wasn't sure about the exact nature of her feelings for Logan, but she was certain that she didn't want anything to happen to the man in front of her. With determination, Nami grabbed Logan's hands. Logan, listen to me. Just take me to Kokoyashi village and then leave quickly. It's not up to you to decide, Nami, Logan smiled, shaking his head. He then held Nami's face and spoke seriously what I've decided will not change. The navigator of our straw hat pirates can only be you, Nami. Nami's heart sank. She understood that Logan had made up his mind, 
and no matter what she said, it couldn't be changed. Yet, the strength of the Arlong pirates. Thinking of this, Nami burst into Logan's arms and cried, <laughs> But the Arlong pirates are really powerful. It's hard for humans to defeat them. Logan, I don't want anything to happen to you. Would you rather suffer in silence than let others bear it? You're such a silly girl Logan gently patted Nami's back and said with a smile, It's just a mere Arlong pirate group, we can easily wipe them out. Not convinced, Nami interjected, but... No buts. All you need to do is trust me, the Straw Hat Pirates. Just as I trust you, will you, will you trust me? With Logan's heartfelt words, Nami couldn't continue her protests. Yes, Logan believes in me, so why can't I trust Logan? Thinking of this, Nami raised her head. She mimicked Logan, covering his face with her small hands, and said, Let me see your eyes. Logan, understanding what Nami was attempting, smiled and replied, Do you see anything? After a moment of contemplation, Nami pouted, Although I can't see into people's hearts through their eyes like you, I would like to believe you. Hearing this, Logan smiled genuinely. All right, let's go. Logan took Nami's hand and led her out. He kicked open the door of Zoro's room and, with the same vigor, kicked open Luffy's door, shouting, Come out, come and witness the important moment when the Straw Hat Pirate gain a new member. Navigator. Luffy perked up at the word and rushed out immediately. Meanwhile, Zoro, too tired from training, couldn't quite make out what Logan said. Rubbing his sleepy eyes, he mumbled, What's the matter? Can't it wait until tomorrow? Luffy went inside and dragged Zoro out. Hey, hey. Logan said there's a navigator who wants to join. The drowsy Zoro, awakened by Luffy's enthusiasm, got up with a confused what? Chapter 39 That night marked the third banquet in the history of the Straw Hat Pirates, held on the deck. The first time was when Logan joined the team. The second time was when Zoro joined the group. The third time was when Nami joined the group. As the sun streamed through the windows into the cabin the next morning, Nami turned over, her rosy face bathed in warm sunshine. Hum with a soft snort, Nami opened her eyes. The previous night's banquet had been a lively affair, with Logan graciously giving up his bed for Nami, while he took refuge in the studio. Molding the pillow with her little white hand, Nami inhaled a fresh breath. Even the pillow doesn't have any peculiar smell. Logan must take a shower every day. Thoughts of Logan brought a happy smile to Nami's face. What girl wouldn't appreciate a clean man? Nami herself was meticulous about cleanliness, even at sea, insisting on a daily bath when conditions allowed. Now, the man she admired shared her cleanliness habits, making her incredibly happy. After rising, she folded the quilt and made a cup of warm milk, savoring the leisure and comfort she hadn't dreamed of for many years. In the studio, Logan was already immersed in his manga. Despite the late night, his well-established biological clock ensured he woke up on time. After a while, the studio door opened. Hee <laughs> hee. Nami's little head poked through the open door. Are you still used to my bed? She asked, looking up at Logan with a smile. Well, it's so comfortable that I want to sleep in your bed every day, Logan replied with a grin. Nami stepped in with her hands behind her back. When she reached the table, she took out a glass of milk and handed it to Logan. Here you are. Oh? To please me. Logan took the milk, smiling jokingly. Well, sort of. Nami squatted down, laying her arms on the table, with her little head resting on them and a sweet smile on her face. Since it's for flattery, then there must be some idea. Logan teased after finishing the glass of milk. I don't know Nami shook her head. Then let me guess Logan put on a thoughtful look and said, Do you want to read mangas? The mention of mangas caught Nami off guard. She recalled that the pirates in this group, including Luffy and Zoro, had a fondness for reading mangas. Nami's opportunity to steal money from Logan's room had arisen because Luffy and Zoro were preoccupied with mangas. As this realization hit her, Nami couldn't help but feel a twinge of fear in her heart. If she had succeeded in stealing the money, it would have been the biggest mistake of her life. Thankfully, Logan intervened in time. At that moment, she appreciated how he prevented her from making a choice she would have regretted. Coming to Logan's studio now, she had no particular purpose. Bringing him a glass of milk, she simply wanted to spend time with him. 
that's all. After Logan's suggestion, Nami became intrigued by the world of mangas. What an attractive storyline is in the manga that can fascinate those two guys. She pondered. Upon being asked by Logan if she wanted to read mangas, Nami nodded and said, Well, you guessed it. I knew it Logan smiled, tapping Nami's cute nose lightly. You can read all the mangas on the shelf, choose one you like. Great. Nami enjoyed the playful interaction with Logan, feeling a kind of first love excitement. As she perused the bookshelf, Nami saw a wide variety of mangas. However, as a girl, she found herself drawn to stories where girls were the protagonists. After flipping through for a while, a manga caught her attention, Card Captor Sakura. Such a cute and lovely heroine picking up the manga, Nami leaned against the bookshelf to start reading. Logan glanced at Nami but continued working on his manga without saying anything. He appreciated the quiet atmosphere when he worked. While he would have thrown out Luffy and Zoro without hesitation if they were reading mangas here, he had no issue with Nami enjoying her time. Who could possibly dislike a girl as beautiful as Nami? Taking breaks from his work to admire her was not a bad idea it not only gave his eyes a rest but also added a touch of beauty to the studio. On Nami's side, engrossed in the first episode of Card Captor Sakura, she was captivated by the two adorable characters, Sakura and Tomoyo. What a cute girl. Hey? The cards in this book actually have such magical abilities. I'm so envious of little Sakura. If I could have these cards, the villains of the Arlong Pirates wouldn't be able to persecute the civilians of the Konami Islands. It's a pity that this is just the world in the mangas. While lost in these thoughts, Nami suddenly felt the surroundings change. Ah! She subconsciously looked around. Nanny! This! 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 Isn't this Sakura Kinomoto's father's study? What happened? Am I dreaming? Nami reached out to touch the bookshelf beside her. What? This touch. It's real. Wait. If this is Sakura Kinomoto's father's study, wouldn't it be? I promised Logan not to steal any more, but stealing things from the manga world. Thinking of this, Nami quickly walked around the two bookshelves, carefully checking the one next to the wall. Finally, when her fingers touched a certain book in the middle. Hum. Golden light shone on this book. Chapter 40 It's the Clow Card Having seen the written appearance of the Clow Card in the mangas before, Nami's eyes shone when she saw this heart shell book emitting a golden light. Shouldn't this be something that Sakura Kinomoto got? Why am I getting it now? And can I really go to the manga world at will? What is going on? Hey? Wait a minute. Suddenly, Nami's beautiful face frowned. Luffy and Zoro are so obsessed with reading mangas every day, could they also enter the manga world? Yes. Those two guys, one being a fighting madman and the other is an idiot, how could they sit there quietly for a whole day? If they couldn't enter the world of mangas, how could they be meditating? After grasping the truth, Nami suddenly realized it. I just don't know if entering the manga world will benefit you. Looking at the cloud book in her hand, Nami pondered the plot of the manga she had just read. If you can conquer the cloud card in the manga world, then... Thinking of this, Nami's heart began to beat faster. When little Sakura opened the cloud book before, she accidentally activated the wind card, causing all other cloud cards to be blown away. I can't make this mistake. As a clever little burglar, Nami was adept at learning from the mistakes of others. She slowly opened the cover of the hardcover book, determined not to repeat the same mistake as little Sakura. However, when she opened the cover completely, the anticipation on Nami's face suddenly dimmed. Hey hey! Looking at the empty hollow of the cloud book, Nami's little face froze for a moment, and then a wry smile appeared. What am I expecting? Before I came, this cloud book had already been turned over by little Sakura. How could there be a cloud card in it? Shrugging her tender shoulders unhappily, Nami prepared to put the cloud book back. But at this moment... Hum. The cloud book once again burst into golden light. What? The sudden bloom made Nami startled, and she subconsciously let go of her hand. The cloud book fell to the floor, landing on the inside of the last page. A bright red magic circle emerged on this page. The surface of the magic circle, like a calm lake, suddenly fluctuated. In the horror of Nami's slightly opened mouth, a small elf girl with a pair of transparent wings flew out of the magic circle. The elf's limbs drooped naturally, without flapping its wings, it just floated upward slowly. She closed her eyes, 
and when she was at the same level as Nami's line of sight, the elf girl suddenly raised her head. Hello. The moment she opened her eyes, the elf girl seemed to be activated suddenly, and her sweet voice was full of excitement. Wow. Woosh kawi. Seeing such a small elf girl, Nami's girlish heart suddenly overflowed. She stretched out her palm, and the elf girl fell into her hand very cooperatively. Thank you for waking me up, I am the ceiling elf of this book, Kirili. The elf girl tapped Nami's palm lightly with her toes, and her body spun around in the air. Ceiling elf. There was a look of surprise on the pure face. Nami frowned slightly and then asked in doubt, but, if I remember correctly, shouldn't the sealed beast of the cloud card be called Kuro? After a pause, Nami added, that little, lion that looks silly. The elf Kirili chanted in a clear and sweet voice. A golden key-shaped symbol appeared in front of Nami, and it slowly floated towards her. Contract. Nami's surroundings seemed to shimmer with a faint golden light, and the key symbol merged into her chest. Congratulations, Nami. From now on, you have become an order magician with the power of the Clow Book. You can use this power to control the Clow cards and the magic in this world. Kirili announced cheerfully, clapping her hands. Really? That's amazing. Nami was genuinely surprised, looking at the elf Kirili with admiration. He he, it's nothing, as long as you can understand the magic of this world, you can easily control it. Now, try to call out release, and see what happens. Following Kirili's guidance, Nami took a deep breath and shouted, Release. To her amazement, a magical circle appeared in front of her, and a cloud card emerged from it. Whoa! This is so cool! Nami couldn't help but be excited as she held the cloud card in her hand. Hee <laughs> hee, you will gradually learn to control more cards. Remember, each card has its unique ability. Experiment and have fun with them. Kirili encouraged Nami with a playful expression. Nami felt a surge of curiosity and excitement. Little did she know that her adventure in the manga world was just beginning. Nami, still holding the newly acquired magic wand, felt a surge of energy within her. The feeling of power was exhilarating, and the prospect of capturing clow cards ignited her adventurous spirit. Set off, hi? Let's do it. Nami responded with enthusiasm. The elf Kirili led the way, fluttering through the air and guiding Nami towards the window. As they reached the window, Nami hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath. Release. With that command, a magical circle appeared, and a cloud card materialized in front of Nami. It hovered in the air, displaying its mystical presence. What's this card's ability? Nami asked, eager to learn about the powers she now possessed. This is the Windy card, Kirili explained. It has the ability to control the wind. Try saying its name and see what happens. Nami focused on the windy card and shouted, Windy. The magical circle glowed brighter, and a gentle breeze began to swirl around the card. Leaves lifted off the ground and danced in the air. He he, well done. You're a natural at this, Kirili praised. Nami grinned, excited by the possibilities that lay ahead. With her newfound magical abilities, she was ready to embark on an adventure within the manga world, capturing clow cards and experiencing the fantastical realm created by the manga she had admired. Let's capture more cards and have some fun. Nami declared, looking forward to the magical journey that awaited her. Chapter 41 Kirili, who is an order elf, is obviously stronger than the sealed beast puppy. She swayed her magic power and flew out of little Sakura's house with Nami. Being in the sky, Kirili said, Nami, now feel it with your heart and see if you can sense the breath of the cloud card. This is great. Although she was driven to the shelves, Nami is still very positive about what to do. Holding the magic wand in her hand, she closed her eyes, and the unique magic power belonging to the magician radiated out to the surroundings. Soon, Nami exuded the light of magic power deeply, and the magic power sprinkled to the earth like mercury pouring down the ground. You are a natural magician. Feeling the majestic magic power emanating from Nami, even Kirili, the elf of order, couldn't help sighing. There. Without keeping Kirili waiting for too long, Nami's eyes suddenly opened, and there was a hint of sharpness in those pupils. So fast. Kirili was a little surprised. With such a search speed, even those graceful magicians in the past thousand years probably couldn't reach this level, right? Wow. I'm so lucky. Kirili's magic power moved, let's go there. The two shuttled through the clouds and soon came to the top of a zoo. It's here. 
Nami stopped, looked down and said. Okay, let's go down. But Kirili waved her magic power, and the two quickly landed. Boom. Boom. Snapped. In the zoo at night, there was a rumbling sound, which was obviously not normal. Be careful. Suddenly, Nami grabbed Kirili and jumped to the right. Boom. A small rockery landed where Nami was standing just now, and the ground exploded. This violent temper, should be the power card. But Kirili's little head came out of Nami's arms and analyzed. Hey, hey. Couldn't the staff in the zoo hear such a big commotion? The first thing Nami considers is not the card, but the people in this zoo are too strange, right? Even at night, you can't be a truly ignore this, can you? No. Because ordinary people cannot see the magic power of the claw card, their movements will be automatically blocked under the magic power of the card. If someone happens to pass by here now, he can only see what happened just now. The rockery is flying out of thin air, you will definitely think it is haunted. Kirili explained to Nami. So it's like this, I thought that these people are deaf. Shrugging, Nami showed a dumbfounding expression. Boom. Something was thrown up and fell heavily to the ground. Nami asked, how can I subdue her? As long as you point your magic circle at her forehead and say return to your original appearance, she will become a power card for you to use in the future. Kirili explained. Uh, but I can't even see where she is. In fact, even if you saw it, it would definitely not be able to obediently stay there and let you seal it. But Kirili said while flying, I have a way to make her appear, but as for how to subdue her, it can only be done by yourself. Well, I'm on my own. Nami is speechless. Kirili didn't notice Nami's expression, but Kirili continued. Nami thinks she herself is very powerful, if someone wants to compete with her strength, they should show up. Nami showed an incredible expression. This is your plan? She is called Power Card, and I have to compete with her. Is there no other way? Nami asked bitterly. But Kirili stuck out her tongue playfully, this is the way. Seeing Nami's embarrassment, Kirili thought about it and asked, why don't we go to other places to find other Clow Cards? After all, Nami is now tantamount to starting from zero, without the help of any claw card power. It is indeed difficult to generate a lively claw card. If you can find a good opportunity and get a claw card first, it will be of great help to collect the claw cards in the future. After thinking for a while, Nami shook his head resolutely, no need. Even if I go to find other claw cards, the situation I have to face is still the same. Instead of wasting time searching aimlessly, focus on what's in front of you. Nami herself is a very strong girl. Therefore, she plans to subdue the power card. Hey! You the power card! Do you dare to come out and compete with me to see who is more powerful? After Nami made up her mind, she shouted into the dark night ahead. Boom! 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 The ground exploded one after another. It seemed that there was one that kept trampling the ground and was rushing towards Nami. Not waiting for the appearance of the power card, but waiting for such a terrible scene, Nami has the urge to cry. She is not stupid, she turned around and ran away. While running, he yelled at Kirili, I'm already provoking her, why hasn't she shown up yet? But Kirili flew beside Nami, thought for a while, and said, what should you try to tell her the specifics? Nami hurriedly yelled, hey! You like throwing things very much, dare to compare with me who throws farther. Sure enough. As soon as Nami said this, the movement behind her disappeared immediately. The next moment, a little pink lily appeared in midair in front of Nami, and then landed slowly. There is only less than half a meter behind her, but she has perfect body proportions, and a pair of elf-like pointed ears, all of which make people feel cute. And a... Nanny? The power card is such a cute little lily. Even though Nami had already guessed that the power card was a woman, she never expected it to be such a cute little lily. But Kirili reminded, don't underestimate her, or you will suffer a lot. Well, I know that. Nami nodded, but still couldn't help but look at the power cards a few more times. It's too cute. Are you going to throw farther than me, and what are you throwing? Blinking her kind pink eyes, the cute little Loli asked with a harmless face. Even, as soon as she opened her mouth, that cute and cute voice made people go up and take a bite. Stones, trash cans, benches, or rockery. I let you choose. Although the voice of little Loli is very cute, 
but the words she speaks are very arrogant and conceited. Okay. Then let's throw this. Without any hesitation, Nami immediately took out, a piece of paper from her pocket. Chapter 42 Hey hey! Seeing that Nami took out a piece of paper suddenly, Kirili, the elf of order, was startled. Hey hey hey! This is the power card. Its strength is super strong, even if there is a mountain in front of her, this little lowly can easily throw it away. Let alone a piece of paper? Aha! Uh -huh. Toss this? Then I will one easily. Although the little Lolita is extremely powerful, she is very simple. Seeing that Nami just took out a piece of paper, she put her hands on her hips and laughed. That's not necessarily the case. We each throw once, and whoever throws the farthest wins. Nami walked over to the power card and handed her the paper in his hand. Watching the little girl take the paper, Nami did not forget to continue provocatively, I'll see how far you can throw it. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Watch it. Comparing strength. I have never lost. Little Loli take the paper, stretched her small arms backwards, and then threw it forward. Brush. The paper comes out of the hand of the power card. However, even with its strongest power the paper only flew a little and landed in front of the power card. Little Lolita's eyes widened in disbelief, she looked at the piece of paper under her feet, and her whole body collapsed. How, how is it possible? My strength is infinite. Hey, this is your attempt. Then it's my turn picking up the paper, Nami stood next to little Lolita. Even I can't throw it out, you certainly can't. Before Nami's results came out, little Lolita obviously didn't want to admit defeat. Then, Nami take the paper and roll it into a paper ball. Akirili, the order elf at the side, saw Nami's operation and immediately understood. Not only has the owner has the best magician talent in the past thousand years, but also has wisdom. Wow! What a perfect magician! Whoosh! With a flick of Nami's fingers, the ball of paper drew a parabola and landed far away easily. Yay! I won! After the results came out, Nami jumped up happily with her arms raised. And the power card's little Lolita suddenly looked like a deflated ball, and the smile on her little face disappeared all of a sudden. Instead, it is extremely sad. She slumped to the ground, her big pink eyes were filled with tears. If you have to say it, it's like the feeling of a first grade elementary school student when she got his report card and found out that she failed. Nami, hurry up, now is the best time to officially seal her. Kirili, the elf of order, hurriedly shouted. This kind of good opportunity not to miss, I don't know when it will reappear next time. Okay. Nami picked up the magic wand and looked at the cute and pitiful little girl in front of her. Suddenly there is a sense of guilt for committing a crime. Although Nami doesn't like bullying children, it is the best state for such a violent child to return to the claw card. Gritting his teeth, Nami shook his heart and passed the magic wand in his hand to the little Lolita's forehead. Restore your original appearance. Claw card. As such chanting came out of Nami's mouth, a magic circle was initially selected on the ground below the power card little Loli. Shining light, colorful. Under the magic power of the claw card, the little Lolita of the power card quickly transformed into a pink magic card, and then, like the smoke of Aladdin's lamp, was collected into the magic circle below. Buzz! When all the pink magic power fluctuations disappeared, the magic circle below also turned into a claw card. Isn't the pattern drawn on the card exactly the violent little Loli just now? Hey! What a cute and short-tempered little girl! Follow me from now on! Nami crouched down and picked up the claw card. She looked at Kirili, the elf of order, so, is it subdued? Yet. Yeah. Nami, you're amazing. It's an eye-opener that you've conquered the power cards without the help of any claw magic power. But Kirili praised Nami without hesitation. Okay. Then I will accept your praise. The corners of Nami's mouth raised slightly, and she smiled happily. If Logan knew, he would definitely think that I am amazing. Just as he was thinking wildly, Kirili's voice came from next to his ear. Okay, let's end it first today. Let's go back and rest, and look for other claw cards tomorrow. Next moment. The breath of night was gone, replaced by the silence in the house. There is also a faint smell of milk wafting to Nami's nose. Hey? She came back? Nami subconsciously molded his own face. Just now. Is it real or an illusion? Although the experience is very real, but right now it is in the cabin after all, 
and Nami is not sure which is reality and which is illusion. At this time, there was a feeling of contact in the palm, and Nami looked down. What? This. This is, the power card. She take the power card, and a wave of magic power flowed out from the power card, which was transmitted to Nami. Nami can clearly feel that the feeling of power is always in touch with her. As long as she wants, she can mobilize the power from the power card. I actually got the cloud card. This good news, I want to share with Logan. But looking up, Nami saw that Logan was seriously drawing manga, and couldn't bear to disturb him now. Let's wait, I'll tell him when he finishes drawing the manga. He will definitely praise me for what I can do. I'll try the effect of the power card first. From an ordinary girl to a girl with supernatural power, how could Nami resist the desire to test her new power? Without disturbing Logan, Nami walked out lightly, closed the door, and went straight to the deck. Note, the gift end here, Happy New Year and Happy Holiday to all. Chapter 43 On Deck The morning wind is blowing, and the early birds are already looking for the early fish between the sea and the sky. Oh! Ah! Zoro was holding a self-made super heavy mallet and swung it forward vigorously. When he was in Shimatsuki village, strength training was an essential daily training for Zoro. After becoming a bounty hunter, Zoro will not skip in strength training as long as he has tools at hand. Now that he has joined the Straw Hat Pirates, his daily life has become more regular, and Zoro picked up this habit again. The big mallet in his hand was as tall as the two of him. The head of the mallet took up about half of its length, and it was made entirely of solid iron. It must weigh at least a hundred kg. Even though it was so heavy, Zoro could barely swing the big mallet forward like a sword. For such strength training, Zoro practiced 1000 swing every morning. After the strength training, Zoro will take a short rest before entering the manga to learn swordsmanship from Kojiro Sasaki. And I failed to kill this super dangerous beast, damn it, why is his defense so strong? On the side, Luffy's first trip to Akame GA kill ended today, and he yelled depressingly. He stood up and walked around, ready to stretch his muscles before going in. 987 988 989 the sound of Zoro slashing the big stick made Luffy look over involuntarily. Luffy picked his nostrils and walked towards Zoro, your mallet looks heavy. 997 998 999 1000 After slashing 1000 times, Zoro gently placed the big mallet on the deck to prevent the deck from being smashed. Hey! He took a few deep breaths, adjusted his breath, and said, this way 500 kg. So heavy. Luffy was a little surprised. Can this thing be that heavy? Let me give it a try. Recently, in the Akame GA Kill world, Luffy almost wiped out all the dangerous beast on the deserted island, but the big boss of dangerous beast still can't be defeated. The main reason is that the defense of the dangerous beast is too thick, and Luffy's strength is simply not enough to break it. But in the battle after battle, Luffy found that when he wanted to gather stronger power, a black aura would emerge from his fists and even his arms. Luffy believed that as long as this black aura was trained to a more powerful level, he would definitely be able to beat the super dangerous beast. However, Luffy himself has no idea how strong his current strength is. Seeing Zoro slashing with this big mallet now, he suddenly became interested and wanted to try his hand. He was about to do it when he heard the cabin door open. Nami stepped out of the cabin. Hey? Nami, you came just in time. Take a look at the weather. Is it possible that there will be a storm later? Zoro pointed to the distant sky, where there was a black cloud, and there seemed to be lightning. Storm? Nami actually came to the deck intending to try the effect of the power cards, but at this time, hearing Zoro's words, Nami also became vigilant. On the sea, if there is a storm, the consequences are quite dire. It can be said that on the sea, the storm is the absolute king. Nami walked over, ready to go to the bow to have a look. But Zoro's homemade mallet was placed right on the bow deck, preventing Nami from getting there. She subconsciously reached out to grab the handle of the big mallet. Hey! Zoro wanted to stop immediately. After all, this thing weighs more than 500 kilograms, it would be bad if Nami accidentally hurt herself. However, before he could say the next words, he was dumbfounded. Because Nami raised her hand casually, and picked up the big mallet. Hey! Luffy's eyes widened in bewilderment, and then he looked at Zoro. Didn't you say that this big mallet is super heavy? That's it. 
Zoro also opened his mouth wide. No. No no. This must be an illusion. For a moment he didn't know how to explain to Luffy that he wasn't lying. What is this? It looks so ugly. Holding a big mallet in front of his eyes, Nami took a look, then took two steps forward, approaching the edge of the bow. She held the handle of the big mallet with one hand, and then, as if she was holding a small wooden stick, she pointed the big mallet at the dark clouds in the distant sky and asked, Is that the black cloud you are talking about? What? Seeing Nami swinging the big mallet lightly, Zoro's Adam's apple slid up and down, and he stammered, Yes, yes. Okay. It's a cyclone caused by a small cold front passing through the border. It will only cause precipitation in a small area of local sea areas, and it is not on the same line as our course. So we are fine. Shrugging, Nami explained. Afterwards, she looked around, trying to find a heavy object to test the effect of the power card, but found that there seemed to be nothing on the deck. Shaking her head dejectedly, she lightly leaned the big mallet in her hand against the bow of the ship, and went back to the cabin. When Nami's figure disappeared at the hatch, Luffy crossed his hands in front of him, and looked at Zoro with the gaze of Sherlock Luffy. Humph, you actually used a hollow one to fool me. Unfortunately, I see it through I really thought that you practiced heavy swing every day. Although Zoro's trick was exposed, Luffy did not mean to ridicule, but only teased. No no, this really weighs 500 kg. Zoro opened his hands, his face was anxious and serious. Luffy grinned at the corner of his mouth, and laughed, oh? Then tell me, why is something that weighs 500 kilograms lift like a small wooden stick in Nami's hands? How do I know this? Zoro is also very heartbroken now, he frowned and said, maybe, Nami is born with supernatural strength. As soon as the words came out, Luffy laughed out loud. Then Luffy turned around and planned to continue to practice in the world of Akam G.A. Kill. Hey stop! Zoro said. Seeing that Luffy is going to take him for a liar, Zoro can't take it. Don't believe it. Then you try it. Saying that, Zoro grabbed the big mallet with both hands and threw it towards Luffy. It's useless for you to throw the fake over here, ah. As soon as Luffy got the fake product, he let out a scream and was suppressed. Chapter 44 On the deck, it took Luffy a while to recover. He pushed the big mallet on his body hard, moved it to the side, and said in a daze, it's so heavy. Believe me now. Zoro raised his chin, showing a bit of complacency. I believe it Luffy thought. But the problem is. Luffy tilted his head to look in the direction of the cabin door, he couldn't help but scratched his head, why does Nami hold it like a wooden stick? Two big men are not as strong as a little girl. Don't you think it's embarrassing? At the mention of this, Zoro immediately turned into a discouraged ball, and said with shame on his face, maybe. Just as I guessed just now, she is born with supernatural strength. Luffy pondered for a moment, then nodded heavily, you're right. Then, he suddenly jumped up from the ground and became excited, no way. Zoro, the two of us have to work hard. We must not lose strength to our navigator. On Luffy's provocation, Zoro also frowned, that's right. Let's work hard together. Try to surpass Nami as soon as possible. The two took out the manga and entered it. A few days later, the pirate ship docked. Oops. There are hidden reefs in this harbor. Zoro lay prone on the edge of the fence, looking down the hull. Whoosh. Luffy stretched his legs and jumped off the deck. He approached the hull and took a closer look. There seems to be a small problem. Picking his nose, Luffy said with a slightly doubtful tone. Zoro followed and disembarked. But when he saw the damaged part of the hull, he immediately opened his mouth wide open. Idiot, you call this a small problem. Hurry up and inform Logan and Nami, let them get off the ship. Ah. By the way, Logan still has so many mangas, hurry up, let's get the mangas for him. Without waiting for Luffy's reaction, Zoro rushed onto the deck with his gun, and then rushed into the cabin. Hey? The problem seems to be a bit serious. Looking at the whole hole that was pouring water violently, Luffy realized it later. With hands stretched out, Grabbing the edge of the deck, Luffy also climbed onto the deck. But before he could go to the cabin, he saw Logan and the three of them had already come out of the cabin. The vibration sound of the collision of the hull just now was not small, and it was impossible for the people in the cabin to not notice it. Nami went to Logan's studio immediately, intending to help Logan transfer the mangas. But when she got there, 
Nami was surprised to find that all the mangas had disappeared, and then she was dragged by Logan and ran out together. On the way, they met Zoro who was lost in the cabin. What about books? You don't care about the mangas anymore. Although Luffy is slow-witted, he also knows how important the mangas are. That is the treasure house of true power. The manga is fine, I store it with the fruit ability. In fact, Logan put the manga into the system space. When several people got off the ship, the hull of the pirate ship had sunk by nearly a measure. And it keeps sinking. Logan took a look at the damage on the hull, it was really exaggerated. He broke the wooden board at the hole with his hands. Broke in. Apparently, the ship was weather-beaten and was about to retire. The boards have rotted like this, it's a blessing to be able to reach this island. Nami checked it out and made an accurate judgment. Logan was silent for a while. When he crossed over, he landed on this ship. Although this ship has nothing to do with him, he has lived on this ship for more than a year after all. After all, there is still some emotion. Now that the ship is suddenly lost, Logan will inevitably feel a touch of reluctance in his heart. When he read the manga before, when he saw that the Mary was declared dead, Usopp went crazy and went to be an enemy to the other crew. At that time, Logan felt that Usopp was really childish. The Mary is obviously unable to continue sailing, so why hang on? But now, when this kind of thing happened to him, he realized that Usopp's reaction was not exaggerated at all. What's more, for the Straw Hats and Usopp, the Mary is of great significance. The rotten ship in front of me is completely incomparable. Logan, your ship seems to be dying. Luffy said bluntly. Zoro turned his head and glanced at him, it seems inappropriate to say this at this time. Nami took Logan's arm and comforted, it can no longer support the next voyage. For it, its mission has been completed. Logan shrugged, patted Nami's head with a smile, and said, Don't worry, I'm okay. With that said, Logan lit a torch. Meeting is a fate, and parting may just be the starting point of reunion in the next life. Thank you for being with me this year. If there is an afterlife, I hope I can meet you in your best years. Feeling emotional in his heart, Logan lit the small broken ship on fire. This is Syrup Village, Logan remembered, going Mary was born here. The small broken ship dragged them here with its rotten remains, and then left sadly. Exit at place where going Mary is about to be born. Isn't this just a mission handover? Chapter 45 On the beach The four members of the Straw Hat Pirates sit together. If we want to continue sailing, it seems that we need to buy a ship in this village. Luffy suggested. Zoro agreed, yes. I just don't know if there are any shipwright in this village who are good at building ships. I feel that our ships should be bigger. In the world of pirates, because of the special geographical setting, every island is separate by sea. Therefore, there is no place that does not have the ability to build ships. No, Our money is gone. Suddenly, Luffy suddenly remembered something, immediately shouted, and was about to get up and rush into the sea. Don't be nervous, the money is still safe. Logan had quick eyes and quick hands, and held Luffy down. Where's the money? I didn't see it. Luffy wondered. Before Logan could speak, Nami spoke first. I asked this question when I came out just now. When Logan put away the mangas, he also put away the money. As the person who loves money the most in the whole group, Nami should have cared about whether the money was gone, since she act normally it already shows that the money is safe. So it is, Luffy. Breathed a sigh of relief, and sighed, Logan's fruit ability is really reliable. At this time, Logan said, I also agree with Zoro's proposal just now. We must build a big ship this time. It must be able to accompany us all to the next journey. I don't want to go through another farewell scene with a ship. Logan. Nami leaned closer to Logan. Zoro felt his teeth soar, and subconsciously scratched his arm. At this time, Zoro really envied Luffy, an emotional idiot, more and more. He really didn't notice Nami's affection for Logan at all. Great. Hearing what Logan said, Luffy raised his hands happily, Logan, you are right. We must have a big ship that can carry all our partners around the world. Zoro said, the deck needs to be big, so it's easy to practice. Then I want to have a big room. Next to Logan's room, there should be a door to go through it. Nami also expressed his thoughts. Logan nodded, okay. The next thing to do is to go to the island to find a good shipbuilder. For Logan, 
he certainly knows who the best shipbuilder in Syrup Village is. But when he first arrived on this island, if he tell everyone that he know everything about this island. It would be strange. Looking for a shipbuilder? Then let's find someone to ask. After speaking, Luffy turned his head to look at the hillside not far away, and shouted, Hey, who is the most powerful shipbuilder on your island? Seeing Luffy's sudden approach, the other three looked over at the same time. Nami looked at it for a while, and asked in confusion, Hey! Who are you talking to? Is there anyone there? Luffy, don't be suspicious, there is just bushes. Zoro didn't notice any movement either. There are really people. I heard them all. There are four people in total, and three of them should be little kids. Luffy pointed to the bushes and said seriously. Afterwards, he gave everyone a dumbfounded look, didn't you all hear that? Zoro frowned, are you kidding me? If there is someone there, we should have seen them. Nami also said, that's right, even if you want to play tricks on us, you have to make up a decent reason otherwise, how could we be fooled? He did hear it. At this time, Logan spoke. Hearing what Luffy said just now, Logan was also taken aback. But then, he realized that the problem seemed not so simple. In the world of pirates, there is indeed a power of listening. Its name, Observation Hacky. If it is the original plot, it is definitely impossible for Luffy to come into contact with Observation Hacky at this time. Even Oda hasn't thought of such a thing as Hacky yet. But right now, Luffy is already trained to his third gear. In this case, the practice of awakening Hacky should also begins, it makes sense, right? What's more, judging from the situation described by Luffy just now, the power of listening does meet the standard of observation Hacky. Did you really hear that? Zoro gave a surprised look. Are ears better than eyes? What does it mean? Nami rested her chin and looked at Logan curiously. Since Logan said that Luffy heard it, Nami naturally believed it. Luffy himself scratched his head, I did hear it, but I don't know what's going on. Logan, it looks like you know. Um. Logan nodded and explained, we all know that there is something called devil fruit in this world, which can give ordinary people great power. Everyone nodded. Logan continued. And the place we want to go is called the Grand Line. There, there are many powerful pirates who don't have devil fruit, but they can still dominate. What they rely on is a practice called hacky. Hacky. It was the first time for the other three people to hear this word, and it put question marks on their foreheads. Hacky is divided into three types. One of the powers can sharpen the five senses, including the power of hearing. By practicing this power, you can detect the breath of surrounding creatures, and even emotional changes. During battle, you can use this power to predict and avoid danger. If I'm not mistaken, what Luffy used just now is this power called Observation Hacky. Logan set up a popular science lecture for everyone. Anyway, he will be exposed to Hacky in the future, so it is better to let them familiarize themselves with this knowledge earlier. There is also a kind of Hacky called Armament Hacky. It can improve the defense of the human body, like invisible armor. Wrapped around the body can also enhance the strength of the person. It can even capture the elementalization of the Logia Fruit Ability user. Not only can it affect user body, and it can also affect on objects. Logan continued to explain. That is called armament hacky. Luffy's eyes sparkled. Eyes are shining. It seems that Luffy is looking forward to this kind of power. That's right, the strong will be like this. Logan immediately encouraged and said, Yes, Luffy. With your talent, if you go through a few more battles, you should be able to touch the threshold of armament hacky. But as soon as he finished speaking, he saw a black air flow emerging from Luffy's arm. Look, Logan, is this one? I just wanted to say thanks for reading and all the support I got, here's some ch. And Happy New Year. Chapter 46 Look, Logan, is this one? Luffy show his black arm forward. Isn't that wrapped around Luffy arm armament hacky? FK. This really made Logan look confused. I know you're so early. I didn't know you were this super early. Just left the village for half a month use new power up to the third gear, and hacky. Just how did Luffy do it, Logan thought. But, isn't it better like this, the more powerful Luffy is the more easy the journey will be for Logan. Thinking of this, Logan quickly added the third type of hacky, Conqueror's hacky. When it was confirmed that Luffy hadn't awakened Conqueror's hacky, Logan finally breathed a sigh of relief. 
Okay okay. It would be atrocious if Conqueror's Haki had won too. They're leaving. Luffy stood up suddenly, and his right hand stretched out suddenly with the force of rubber, over the grass and shrubs on the hillside. Ah! Monsterer! Usopp's scream came from behind the grass bushes. As Luffy's arm retracted, Usopp was also lifted. Just, just now your AR. Arm stretched. Hey, hey, you, you see. As soon as he was carried to the beach, Usopp pointed at Luffy and shouted in panic. Don't be nervous, Luffy is a rubber man he ate the rubber rubber fruit so his body can be stretched like rubber. Logan patted Usopp on the shoulder, signaling him to be calm. Although this one looks a bit cowardly and unmanly, it's only temporary. As the absolute secret weapon of the Straw Hats in the future, the Straw Hats can promise not to underestimate God Usopp easily. Logan grabbed Luffy's nose, pulled it forward, and pulled it for a long time, see? This is the ability of rubber fruit. Ah! Longer than, longer than my nose. Usopp subconsciously molded his own nose. This was the first time he had met an opponent in terms of nose length. Yes. But your nose is fixed. His nose can be longer or shorter than yours. As soon as Logan let go, Luffy's nose bounced back. Amazing. Seeing such ability, Usopp is really envious. However, he suddenly realized something, and immediately asked vigilantly, Who are you? We are the Straw Hat Pirates. Luffy replied without hesitation. Pirates. Upon hearing this, Usopp's inner brave warrior soul stirred up. No, I have to protect the village. Aha! Uh -huh. Then you have come to the wrong place. There are no shipbuilders here, and this is the village of pirates. And, there is me. With a thumb pointing at himself, Usopp said boldly, I am Usopp, the leader of the big pirate group in this village. People call me, Captain Usopp. For the sake of meeting you once, I advise you to give up attacking this village. Otherwise, my 80 million subordinates will not stand idly by. When speaking, Usopp crossed his hands in front of him, and his tone was arrogant. Looks like a big pirate. Lai. Nami saw through Usopp at a glance. As soon as the words came out, Usopp panicked, ah? Was I discovered? Nami giggled, ah ha ha, look, you admit it. Nanny? It turns out that you, a nasty woman, lied to me? Ah ha ha ha. You are so interesting. Luffy laughed out loud at Usopp's hilarious look. Usopp was furious, hey! How dare you make fun of me? I am a man with pride. That's why everyone calls me Usopp the man with pride. Seeing this, Logan explained with a smile. Don't worry, Usopp. We didn't come to attack the village, we came here for two things. One is to buy a big ship, and the other is to find a suitable partner to go to sea with us. Nanny? Isn't it attacking the village? Why didn't you say it earlier? After a while, a certain restaurant in the village. Usopp sat down to eat with the Straw Hat Pirates. If we talk about ships, then only that family will have big ships. After the Straw Hat Pirates meal, Usopp began to talk freely. Then blah blah blah, blah blah, Usopp took the opportunity to sum up, so, aren't you looking for a companion? Luffy looked over, do you have a suitable candidate? Usopp pointed to himself with his thumb and said triumphantly, I. I can be your captain. The four members of the Straw Hat Pirates look at Usopp and stare blankly. And keep eating. You really don't want me to be your captain? If you miss this chance, you won't have another chance. I'm the best sniper on the seas. Hey, hey. Can you hear me? Give me some response. After drinking and eating, Logan thought about how to get close to Kaya and gain her trust. Otherwise, a group of pirates ran over and said they wanted to buy a ship from him, wouldn't they frighten the little girl? After thinking about it, Logan suddenly had an idea. With a thought, he drew a bounty from the system space. Taking out this bounty, Logan put it in front of Usopp. Have you seen this man? Logan pointed to the portrait on the bounty and asked Usopp. Hey? Isn't this Mrs. Kaya's butler, Claudor? He's a nasty guy, do you know him? Usopp immediately recognized the guy who kept Kaya from meeting him. Butler. Logan showed an unbelievable expression. What's wrong? Although Usopp was cowardly, he was actually very careful, and immediately realized that something was wrong. Logan pointed to the portrait with his finger, this person, 
he is the captain of the Black Cat Pirates, Kuro, who kills people like hemp. He suddenly disappeared mysteriously three years ago, to think we found him to be here. Hey, hey, could it be a mistake? Shouldn't it be? Although he hates Claudor, Usopp doesn't want to wrong people casually. You can't make a mistake, you can read below. Logan opened the bottom of the folded paper. Usopp immediately looked down at the text below. Kuro, the captain of the Black Cat Pirates. The number of civilians killed exceeds 700, the number of marines killed exceeds 100, and a reward of 16 million belly is offered. What? Dash. Panic and fear suddenly burst out from the originally calm eyes. Usopp faltered in horror, this, this is. This is the bounty I found in the reference room in Shell's town. Marine's bounty cannot be fake, right? Logan said nonsense with a serious face. No. Kaya. I have to tell her the truth. After a short period of fear, Usopp immediately thought of Kaya's safety, he grabbed the bounty and ran away. Chapter 47 Usopp ran ahead, followed by the four straw hat pirates. I didn't expect a big pirate who offered a reward of 16 million belly to hide here as a butler. What is he planning? Nami followed Logan, feeling very puzzled. He is a murderous pirate, he will definitely not do good things. Zoro said calmly. Logan nodded, yes, this kind of person, he will never be a butler for no reason. In Shell's town, when Luffy and I went to find a sword for Zoro, I accidentally saw the information room of the bounty. I thought it might be useful, so I brought some out. I didn't expect it to come in handy. Hey? That doesn't seem to be the main entrance, does it? Suddenly, Luffy looked at Usopp who was climbing the wall in front of him with a dazed expression. Zoro's mouth twitched. Usopp, didn't you say you know the rich lady? Nami also patted his forehead, and joked playfully, you really are a big liar. Let's go, let's go to the wall too. Logan curled his lips, without saying a word, he walked to the corner quickly, and slid up to the top of the wall. Logan grab me Nami said. Logan grabbed Nami's little hand and pulled her up. Later, Luffy and Zoro also came up. Over the wall, Usopp led the way with ease, and soon arrived under the window sill of Kaya's boudoir. At the window, Kaya is watching the blue sky and white clouds outside the window. At first glance, it looks like a canary in a cage. Usopp, you're here? The last story is coming to an end, isn't it? Seeing Usopp, Kaya's pale cheeks suddenly glowed. Kaya. Let's not talk about the story, I have something important to tell you. Usopp rushed over. But before he had time to say it, he heard a harsh voice appearing from the corner next to him, it turns out that you are a liar, and this time you brought so many unidentified people with you. It's really going too far. While speaking, Kuro, currently known as Claudor the butler, appeared. What? This person in front of me looks nice. But actually. A pirate. Killing without blinking an eye. Who is not afraid? Not to mention the timid Usopp? Kuro walked over, his eyes fell on Zoro's waist, and then his face became serious, wait. These people have sword, are they pirates? He wasn't afraid. After all, Kuro doesn't care about this East Blue pirate at all. Instead, this incident can be used to make Kaya completely loathe Usopp, so that he can implement his plan. Luffy shout well, we are the Straw Hat Pirates. As soon as the words came out, Kuro shouted angrily, it really is a pirate. He took a step forward, stood in front of Kaya, and turned his eyebrows coldly at the straw hats, you dirty pirates, please get out of here immediately. Don't disturb our lady's rest. While speaking, he also took the opportunity to divert the trouble to Usopp. Usopp, you are really not a good person. I was afraid that you would spoil our lady before, but now you are colluding with pirates. You really have the same virtue as your pirate father. At first glance, Kuro's angry reprimand is reasonable. Of course, if he himself is not a pirate, his personality charm will stand up. Unfortunately. What? Usopp is angry. Because he heard that Kuro actually made fun of his dad. You know, although Usopp is not a good husband or a good father, in Usopp's heart, his father is his hero. Usopp clenched his fists tightly, took a deep breath, and looked at Kuro fiercely with his eyes. As if forgetting Kuro's ferocious name, Usopp yelled, You can't say that about my dad. My dad, he's a brave warrior. Usopp, get to the point. 
Logan poked Usopp's arm with his hand focus. Oh. Right. You said that pirates are not good? What about you? Are you not a pirate? And you are a murderous pirate. Usopp summoned up his courage and said angrily. Hmm? Hearing this, Kuro's heart skipped a beat. Did they know? But the next moment. No, it should be nonsense. What's more, he is Usopp. Who would believe his words? Immediately, Kuro continued to speak in a gentle tone, What are you talking about? Is it so embarrassing that you want to spread lies on me? Kaya on the side was also angry, Usopp, why do you slander Claudor? If you do this again, I will be angry. No, I didn't slander him. Kaya, look, this is Marine's bounty, and the picture on it is Claudor. His real name is Kuro, and he is the captain of the Black Cat Pirates. With that said, Usopp took out the bounty. What? Seeing the bounty, Kaya was a little horrified. The painting on the bounty is indeed Claudor. But is this true? Ha 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 Kuro suddenly laughed. He pointed to the reward and said, Usopp, in order to slander me, did you draw a bounty on purpose? Claudor is not a bad guy. You must have made a mistake why did you draw this? Kaya also thinks so. Usopp was in a hurry, I didn't lie. Forget it, I'm too lazy to argue with a liar like you. Kuro shook his head calmly, then shouted towards the yard, Come on, please get these pirates out. Ah! You bastard! Seeing that Kuro completely ignore him, Usopp rushed forward anxiously. But he was caught by Logan. Okay, Kuro. It doesn't matter if you don't admit it. Logan's voice caught Kuro's attention. Logan pointed to Zoro and said, He is a bounty hunter. He took the Marine's bounty, so he came to arrest you. Just go through the procedure and let Miss Kaya know your true face, then surrender, so we can get through this. Hearing what Logan said, Kuro's expression finally changed. As for Zoro, once he heard that there was a battle to fight, he immediately felt relieved. Logan reminded, by the way, there is no need to keep him alive. The dead bounty is the same, and it is convenient to transport. Understood. Clang. Wado Ikimanji swords come out of the sheath. Wait. Kuro shouted. He stared at the few people in front of him seriously, and his originally gentle face gradually became cloudy. That gloomy aura made Kaya behind him feel scared, and subconsciously murmured, Claudor. After a while, Kuro lowered his head and shook his head slightly. He put his hands on his face, his body twitched because of the violent laughter. Ha ha, he he ha ha ha. What a bunch of ignorant idiots. The corner of Kuro grinned, and looked at Logan and the others with the eyes of a dead person, isn't it good to be your little pirate with peace of mind? Why did you come here to die? Three days. Kuro raised three fingers, only three more days. What, what three days? Looking at the butler who had become unfamiliar, Kaya spoke nervously. Kuro still said to himself, three days later, my original subordinates will attack this village, and Kaya will die in a pirate attack at that time. And I, will inherit all the property here and live a comfortable life. Ah? Claudor, what are you talking about? An unbelievable expression appeared on her pale face, Kaya didn't know her butler at all. But... Kuro's face suddenly became ferocious, and Kuro pointed at Logan and the others viciously, You idiots! Let my plan be completely ruined. Although killing you, I can take away all the property, but it will lead me to be chased by the stupid marine again. You... Let my three years of hard work go to waste. Kuro hates it. Just because of these few guys, his three years of low eyebrows and pleasing to the eye have become a joke. If he knew earlier that he is going to be exposed, why bother to endure it for three years? Three years of forbearance, forbearance of loneliness. In order to thank you for your stupid behavior, I decided to let you die slowly. Having said that, Kuro pushed his glasses with both hands, and then clenched his fist. Rub. Kuro Cat's Claw, Unsheathed Coldly Chapter 48 When Kuro's cat claw stretched out, Kuro finally couldn't hide the murderous aura on his body. Looking at his gentle face at this time, there is no sense of gentleness, just like a pervert killer. Bounty Hunter, is it? Kuro looked at Zoro, and said sharply, in East Blue, there should be more than a hundred bounty hunters who died in my hands I haven't heard of names like yours, it should be within three years of my retirement a newcomer who has just risen. A rookie, always self-righteous. 
you won't realize how stupid you are until you die. Kuro is angry, he got this amazing plan, but the few people in front of him turned his three-year plan into a joke. He can't let it go. Ah have you finished? Can I handle this? Zoro was a little sleepy, he yawned and said. Puff. Nami covered her mouth and laughed. Logan is speechless it is said that villains die from talking too much. But the one in front of her should belong to the category of I live a few more seconds because I talk a lot. Want to die early? Then come. Hearing. Zoro's ridicule, Kuro also realized that he seemed to be a bit wordy, and immediately stopped talking about it. They are going to fight, you can come here, Logan will protect you. Nami came to the window and helped Kaya out with Usopp. Kaya is now in a state of desperation, unable to face this cruel fact. Since Kuro is a big pirate who has killed countless people, then the death of her parents. Although Kaya knew that her parents died of illness, but now she has no reason not to suspect that this is a conspiracy by Kuro. Thinking of this, grief came from her heart, fear lay on Nami's body, and he began to cry. Come to fight. Zoro rushed to Kuro. In the middle of the road, the sword Wado Ikimanji in his hand suddenly slipped into the scabbard. Hey? Is Zoro going to punch him instead? Luffy scratched his head, confused. Logan also couldn't understand Zoro's operation, so he guessed, maybe he wants to use a new technique. Luffy suddenly has a question mark on his face although Zoro has a lot of move that is a well-known sword move, but since the sword is already in its sheath, do you have to draw it back first and then use this new move? Brush. When Zoro rushed in front of Kuro, Kuro's figure moved sideways instantly and disappeared from Zoro's eyes. Silent step. This is the trick that Kuro is famous for. Like a cunning cat, Kuro moved quickly, but didn't make a sound. Zoro stood where he was, he still didn't draw his sword, he just waited quietly brush. The cold light of Cat's claw came from one side. Zoro moved. However, he didn't completely avoid the blow, causing a small cut in his left arm. Brush. Cat's claw strikes again. Although Zoro was not careless, he still couldn't dodge completely. Another wound. Ah? What is this idiot doing? Nami can't stand it anymore, she also watched Zoro's performance in Orange Town, and knows that Zoro's strength can't be this weak. Your partner, is he unable to lift a sword? Usopp originally hoped that Logan and his gang would get rid of the big pirate Kuro, but now he was a little scared. What if this group of people is not Kuro's opponent, he better run away. But. Kaya is still here, if he escape, wouldn't Kaya die? What's more, this is the village where he grew up. If he escape, what will happen to them? Thinking of this, Usopp immediately picked up the slingshot and aimed at Kuro. But Kuro's silent steps were too fast for Usopp to miss. Forget it, let's cover fire. Facing the possible trajectory of Kuro, Usopp fired a pepper star. Clang. Wado Ikimanji sword's words suddenly came out of the sheath. Snapped. The Firebird Star was shot flying and exploded outside the wall. And a nanny. Usopp was stunned, what kind of operation is this? He shouted, hey, hey. You, I'm helping you. Don't get in the way of my fight. Zoro just said casually, and put the his sword back into the scabbard. Brush. Brush. Kuro's figure continued to jump around Zoro, causing Zoro to have a few more wounds. Stupid guy. Helpless in front of me, can you only yell at your helper for his incompetence? Kuro's figure temporarily stopped in front of Zoro, mocking mercilessly. Ah! How frustrating! The expression on Zoro's face was very depressed, and he said depressed, I can't hear it I can't hear it. Upon hearing this, Kuro sneered, nonsense. This is my ultimate move, silent step, which can move fast like a cat without making a sound. How could it be possible for you to hear the sound? Sure enough, he is a stupid newcomer who doesn't even understand this simple truth. I am really unwilling to be ruined by such a fool. Zoro shook his head, I'm not talking about that, I mean I can't hear your breath. Although Kuro's silent step has no sound, Zoro can still easily keep up with his speed. As long as Zoro's eyes followed Kuro's trajectory, he can guess where Kuro is from his field of vision. But just now, Zoro stood there and didn't move at all. It is that he voluntarily gave up locking Kuro with his vision, so as to listen to Kuro's breath. Breath? What the hell? Kuro looked at Zoro with some disgust, are you confused? Zoro ignored him, but
but turned to look at Logan, the listening power you mentioned is really difficult. Logan rolled his eyes. Good guy. No wonder there has been no sword move. After a long time, you are using Kuro to practice observation hacky. Chapter 49 Although Zoro is stronger, facing this kind of person who is not his opponent at all, he doesn't have the desire to defeat him. But if you can take this opportunity to study observation hacky, it would be great. Pushing his feet, Zoro jumped back. Kuro did not prevent the opponent from making a temporary substitution. In his opinion, no matter how he changes, the final result is that he will destroy the opponent's group. Wow, is it time for me to appear? Luffy took a step forward, spread his legs, and raised his hand. Um? What kind of move is this? Kuro had never seen such a weird move before, and he immediately raised his vigilance. But the next moment. Nanny. Kuro has a feeling of being tricked. Because. Luffy is doing stretching. He really looking for death. In his eyes, Luffy's behavior is simply provocative. Brush. With a movement of the solace of his feet, Kuro disappeared. Brush. Espada's cat's claws flashed coldly and appeared on Luffy's side, cutting directly to Luffy's main artery. Hmm? Kuro paused, his brow furrowed. Because the paw scratched it just now, Kuro didn't feel any force. Missed. Impossible. Luck. The guy must have been lucky and just avoided it. Kuro move again. Brush. Espada's cat claws clawed at Luffy's neck. This time, Kuro saw it carefully. But just when Espada's cat claws were about to cut Luffy's neck, Luffy's stretching motion just twisted his neck to the right. Brush. Espada's cat's claw just brushed Luffy's neck skin less than an inch away. Nanny? Kuro frowned again. I obviously launched the attack from the blind spot of his vision, but he actually dodged twice in a row. Could he predict my attack trajectory? Impossible. How could such a thing happen? It must have been a coincidence. Brush. 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 After a dozen consecutive attacks, Kuro finally realized that the problem was not that simple. Once, twice, it can still be called luck. But after more than a dozen attacks, none of them hit. He has some doubts about this. On the other side, Zoro has been watching seriously. The more he watch, the more he become obsessed with this power of listening. Feeling the ease and comfort of Luffy in the battle, Zoro gritted his teeth, observation hacky, I must master it. Kuro breathed deeply, and he lowered his figure, like a walking cat, carefully looking at the form of the battlefield. Damn it, what is the power of listening that you just said? Is it relying on that power to avoid all my attacks? This dilemma is really uncomfortable. Oh, Logan told me, it's called observation hacky. Luffy finished stretching and said while picking his nose. Observation hacky? What is that? Why haven't I heard of it? Kuro was confused by the word. Logan smiled, isn't it normal for a rookie like you who only has a reward of 16 million to have never heard of such a grand thing? Um? A mere 16 million reward? Rookie? Kuro laughed. He was so angry that he laughed back. After three years of disappearance, has he been reduced to the point of being ridiculed by newcomers? If only you were all better than me. But just now, the green-haired guy was clearly beaten all over by me. And this guy who laughed at me for only having 16 million Pele, do you really know what 16 million represents? That is, looking at the entire East Blue, it is also in existence at the top of the pyramid. Good. I won't be able to kill this idiot with observation hacky for a while, but what about you? Haha. <laughs> All must die. You self-righteous newcomers, do you think that with a strong partner, you can do whatever you want? As a pirate, I, your senior, will teach you how terrifying it is to fight of a pirate who hovers between life and death. With that said, Kuro bowed his body and lowered his head. The hands hang down naturally, and the espada hangs down with it. He suddenly became so scary. Even though it was far away, Nami couldn't help but feel a shiver, and subconsciously leaned against Logan. If I'm not mistaken, he should use that move to kill indiscriminately. Come behind me, and it should spread here later. Logan said. Hearing that Logan wanted to protect her, Nami was very happy, and immediately pulled Kaya to hide behind Logan. Hey, hey, I need protection too. Although Usopp is weak, he is still very accurate in predicting the danger, so he quickly hides behind Zoro. Zoro looked behind Logan, 
then looked behind himself. Die die! With a low shout from Kuro, his figure disappeared instantly. It is several times faster than the previous silent step. Brush! Swipe, swipe, swipe! Luffy looked serious, constantly changing his posture, avoiding every deadly attack without haste. The sword in Zoro's hand sometimes lifted up, sometimes cut horizontally, and sometimes slashed forward. Every time he takes a shot, he hits the Espada Cat's claw accurately. Although he hasn't mastered Observation Haki yet, his vision alone is enough to deal with Kuro's attack. Logan's sight is even more exaggerated. With one hand being held tightly behind Nami's back, only the other arm was used to casually block Kuro's deadly move. Speed, Defense the two attributes seem extremely useful at this time. Good, so amazing, feeling. Logan's calmness, Kaya opened her mouth. Well. Anytime, as long as you are by Logan's side, you are absolutely safe. Nami had a proud expression on her face, as if Kaya was not praising Logan, but her. This is not because Nami deliberately wanted to flatter Logan, but the last time in Orange Town, Logan appeared in time to save Nami who was doomed to die. This absolutely safe personality has been deeply embedded in Nami's soul. Now, Logan easily protects the two of them, and Nami is sure in her heart. In danger, find Logan. Around Logan is the security field. There was a burst of gaudy felling, and the flowers, plants, and trees in the yard were cut to pieces. Kuro paused, gasping for breath, with self-doubt on his face. No. It's impossible. He made a big move, but in the end all of them endured all it. He do not believe. Okay Luffy, you can come back first. Let Zoro take care of this. What should be shown also shows that as far as Zoro can learn, it is up to his own creation. Of course, it doesn't matter if you can't learn it, it's already started, are you afraid that Haki won't come? Although Luffy can easily deal with Kuro, but he is afraid that his head will heat up and knock Kuro into the air. For an out and out garbage like Kuro, it's better to let Zoro finish it. In comparison, Zoro has a sword, which is a better finisher. Kuro's brain buzzed, and he was so angry. You actually use me as a training. Bastard, die for me. Seeing Zoro coming in front of him, Kuro exploded in anger. Brush. Silent step again. Iter uiai, shishi sunsen one sword style, lion song. Clang. Wado ikimanji swords come out of the sheath. Clang. The wado ikimanji sword are sheathed. Zoro walked towards Logan and the others with a blank face. No. Impossible. Behind Zoro, Kuro's figure freezes in the air. Puff. Like a fountain of blood burst out violently from his mouth. Boom. Kuro's body fell to the ground, his eyes were full of unwillingness. Chapter 50 Changing from Claw Door to Kuro, although the process was a bit fast, it was also a bit sudden. But Kaya who had been kept in the dark is not a fool. From the time Kuro's Espada Cat claws were unsheathed, Kaya knew everything. The next day, with the help of another butler, Mary, Kuro's body was sent to the nearest marine base for bounty. In the living room of the mansion, Kaya is entertaining the Straw Hats. If a few people from the Straw Hat Pirates had not come to this island, her life would have come to an end in two days. Kaya couldn't feel better when she thought that the butler who took care of her for three years was actually a murderous pirate. After being lost for a long time, Kaya regained her composure, with a smile on her face, you want a ship right, that's quite a coincidence. What is a coincidence, Sister Kaya? Nami sits next to Kaya, and has been helping her soothe her mood throughout the day. Mary is building a ship recently. It was originally intended to be used for shipping goods for the family business. Since you need it, I can give this ship to you as a gift. Kaya is a kind lady, and she is very grateful to the Straw Hats who helped her. A gift? That would be great. Luffy, who was gnawing on a pig's trotter, immediately raised his hands and cheered happily when he heard this. Nami hearing that change with Barry in her eyes. They saved a lot of money. However, Logan said, if you give it as a gift, it is too expensive. Miss Kaya, we have money, so let's buy it. If it's just going merry like the original plot, then give it away. But Logan planned to have an enlarged version of the merry, and the cost must be at least several times that of the original Mary, maybe even ten times. Although Kaya is a local tyrant, he is only a local tyrant in the village. Logan didn't want to do something like taking advantage of Kaya. Kaya smiled and said, 
it's okay, a ship, it's not too expensive. No, I still have some ideas. After thinking for a while, Logan expressed his thoughts on shipbuilding. After listening to the shipbuilding blueprint drawn by Logan, Kaya understood that the cost of this ship is indeed very expensive. In order to express his gratitude to Logan and others, Kaya insisted on taking out 20 million belly as shipbuilding funds. Don't underestimate 20 million belly, the cost of the Mary in the original plot is only about 10 million berry. Mary took everyone to the shipbuilding workshop. At this time, the Mary has already started laying the foundation of the ship. Mary introduced the ship to Logan, Mr. Logan, since you want a bigger ship, I'll have the keel laid again. However, it may take a little time. Time is not a problem. As the saying goes, sharpening a sword is not the same as chopping firewood. With a good ship, our voyage on the sea will be smoother. As far as materials are concerned, use good materials. With that said, Logan patted his pocket, I'm not short of money. Ah ha ha ha. Mary was also amused by Logan's humor. At this time, Usopp leaned over and whispered in Logan's ear, Are you really not going to let me be your captain? Logan rolled his eyes, then pointed to a tree in the distance, Did you see that tree? Usopp nodded, What? As long as I run under that tree within ten seconds, you will invite me to be your captain, right? Logan shrugged, no, 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 I mean, it's cool under the tree, you go and stay there. You sop. The construction of Mary is not a small project, but with Kaya help, and almost all the labor force of the entire Syrup village came to help. The originally expected one-month construction period was forcibly compressed within a one-week plan. Two days later, the members of the Black Cat Pirates landed in Syrup Village in a mighty manner, confirming Kuro's plan. Subsequently, these guys fell under Zoro's sword one by one. In Kaya's mansion, in a spacious room facing the sun. Logan is drawing a manga. This habit of drawing mangas every day has been integrated into his life. Even if he is not on the ship, Logan is still very self-disciplined. If you don't draw a manga every day, you will feel uncomfortable. As for Luffy, Zoro, and Nami, they all went to help in the shipbuilding workshop. However, Logan didn't quite agree with what the three of them did. After all, there are specializations in the art industry. If you are a layman to help, not only may you not be able to help, but there is a high probability that it will be a disservice. Knock knock knock. At this time, there was a knock on the door. The door was open, and the person who came knocked first was obviously very cultivated. It's Miss Kaya. Logan looked up and saw Kaya holding a cup of coffee at the door. I heard from Nami that Mr. Logan spends a lot of time drawing manga every day, so I just wanted to make a cup of coffee to refresh Mr. Logan. May I come in? Kaya stood at the door, her voice was very gentle. Of course, you are the master here. Logan got up immediately and motioned for Kaya to come in and sit down. Putting down the coffee, Kaya sat at the drawing table, looked at the mangas that Logan was creating, and showed interest. She looked at it for a while, and couldn't help praising, these manga are so exquisite, Mr. Logan is really amazing. Well, that's my specialty. Logan smiled and was not humble. Afterwards, Logan asked, why are you here, is there something wrong? Ah can you tell? Hearing this, Kaya opened her mouth in surprise, and then smiled again, that's right, you are such a powerful person, how can you not see it? Let's be honest, as long as I can help. I will help. Getting along with people is a kind of mutual benefit in itself. Inheriting his love for shipbuilding, it is reasonable for him to ask for something at this moment. Kaya pursed her slightly white lips, and then said cautiously, You, are you really unwilling to take Usopp out to sea? It was actually for this matter. Seeing that Logan did not answer, Kaya said again, I know, you may think that Usopp is a person who likes to talk big and lie. But I promise, he is definitely a reliable partner. If you can, you can take him to the sea together. Logan was a little curious and said, As far as I know, when you are sick, Usopp often told some stories to make you happy, which is very helpful to your illness. According to common sense, you should hope that he stays right. Kaya smiled, Well, I am really grateful to him. In fact, in my heart, he is like a reliable childhood friend. Although he likes to lie, he is definitely not the trash in everyone's mouth. His childhood dream was to be a free sea fighter like his father. Actually, I hate pirates very much, and so do the people in the village. But, he let me know that there are good people among pirates. 
If Usopp is going to be a pirate, I really hope he can be a crewmate of people like you. Oh, yes, sorry, I seem to ask a bit too much. Suddenly realizing that he had been talking, Kaya's little face turned red. It made the pale face that had been ill for a long time appear to have some vitality. Haha, <laughs> it's fine. Logan said with a smile, actually, we have discussed it internally and decided to let Usopp join us a long time ago. Really? Kaya's eyes sparkled. Logan nodded, yes. It's just that this guy wants to be the captain every day, and we deliberately ignored him, haha. <laughs> ah haha, he is just so out of tune. Knowing that the Straw Hat Pirates have accepted Usopp, Kaya feels relieved. Mr. Logan, you are busy, I will ask the servant to prepare lunch for you. Saying that, Kaya stood up and walked out. However, I don't know if it was too hasty to stand up, Kaya suddenly felt a blackness in front of her eyes, and fell directly to the ground. Miss Kaya. Logan had sharp eyes and quick hands, rushed over with one step and supported Kaya. Cough cough cough. The body that was originally weak and untouchable, looked even more withered under a burst of severe coughing. Although Kaya deliberately concealed it, the blood stains in the handkerchief couldn't escape Logan's eyes. Is this, how unlucky a beauty has been since ancient times? With Kaya's physical condition, it is estimated that she will not live long. Sorry for making you worry. Kaya's dizziness improved slightly, she left Logan's arms, and then walked out in a depressed mood. Wait a moment. Logan shouted. O.M. Kaya turned around. I heard that there is a magnetic drum island on the Grand Line. The island is famous for being rich in famous doctors, and there are even old miracle doctors who have lived for more than a hundred years. Your illness is nothing to those people. Although Logan doesn't want to break the original plot, but... Facing Kaya's situation, he can't just sit idly by. If you want, come to sea with us. Go out to sea. Kaya was stunned. Does she want to go to sea? Think. Although those stories were compiled by Usopp, they inspired Kaya's longing for the overseas world. But because of the weakness in her body, it is almost impossible for Kaya to go to sea. However, at this moment, Logan's invitation. Kaya is moved. What's more, that island rich in famous doctors. If her illness can be cured, she will no longer have to be afraid of going to sea. Don't worry about answering me, we still have to stay in Syrup Village for a few days. Before you leave, just give me an answer. Logan said. Well. Thank you, Mr. Logan. I'm going to ask the servant to prepare lunch for you. After shaking the handkerchief in hand, Kaya's heart beat faster. Read ahead and support me only on patreon.com slash golden Garuda. Thanks for listening. <laughs>